Um, if anyone's watching this on the replay, let me chain, let me clean my camera really quick. Um, if anyone's watching this on the replay, my name is Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, maybe, let me open this on my laptop. Sorry, this was so stressful. I was trying to get it to work on my camera, but it was not cooperating at all with me. Um, which was a bummer. So thank you if you're here. Um, I'm so happy you are. Um, I hope everyone had a nice new year um, and stuff. Oh my gosh, it's still very, oh hello, uh, Newt Mushroom. Hello, Vivian. Hello, Bella. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy it's working. Hello, Newt. Oh, thank you. Yes, I dyed my hair pink. I am not gonna lie to you guys. I don't love it. <laughs> I was really hoping it would look super cute and I'm not um, feeling it. I'm really hoping it'll um, fade out much nicer, but right now it's like pastel. I'm trying to get a good light. Sorry, I really should have gotten myself set up before this. Um, I'm so happy that y'all can see me. Do you guys wanna see someone else who's like the most wonderful in the world who's like keeping me company today? Let me flip this. It's Toon! She loves to sit on my desk. I love it so much. She's my favorite girl in the world. <laughs> There's Looney Tunes. Okay. Back to moi. Yeah. Okay. But hi friends. Oh yes, this shirt. I love this so much. It says they, them. Um, who are they? And what do they want? So I was trying to read it in the thing, but I obviously can't read it because it's um, backwards, but I got it from Monarchs of Mars and I'm obsessed with it. Um, but yes, Tuda, um, she sends her regards to all of you. Um, she's been hanging out a lot on my desk lately since I put this little like pink bed up here for her. Um, oh my gosh, I'm doing really good. Oh, I want to say hi to everyone, but the chats are coming in very fast. So I'm going to try to go on my... Oh, this is... Oh, happy new year to Julio. Uh, hello, Z1. Hello, Alan, uh, Aliana Plays. Hello, Megan. Hello, Denki. Hello, Kenzie. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Probably Not King. Hello, Scars Toxics. Z1, Yasmin, Raven Song. Oh, yeah, I remember you commented on Bunny Bun's video. I've been watching their content so much. I think, I, th I want to say her pronouns are she, her. Um, but either way, I've been watching their content so much. I'm going to turn this off, mate. Ah, no, okay. But yeah, it's so nice to um, be here. I haven't gone live in so long and I've been honestly trying to for the past like couple days, maybe the past week and I keep like psyching myself up to do it and then getting like really anxious and not doing it. But I'm really, really happy. Oh, your cats are called Velvet and Domino. That's awesome. Um, but I'm really happy to be here um, live because I think the last time I did a live stream, it was like last year and I had a lot of fun, uh, but I accidentally deleted it because I didn't understand how like saving your live streams and stuff worked. Sorry, this is gonna be loud for a second, so sorry to headphone users. I always like jump out my makeup to do it. I've been considering changing my makeup box from this to, where is it? This. I found this at the thrift store and I think it would make a really cool makeup box. Let me turn this off, do do do. Maybe, oh my god. There, it looks really cool. Um, and I think it would make a really good makeup box. It's like a collage cigar box, and I love it. Thank you for the Happy New Year wishes from everyone. Um, yeah, what did y'all do for New Year's? Did you do anything fun? I stayed home with Cage, my boyfriend, and we went outside at midnight and like bundled up in blankets and we watched fireworks because we live in the city. So that was super, super nice. I'm gonna try to turn this down. Holy shit, this is like the most washed out. Oh, this is the worst. Ah, I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, okay, people slept, listened to Daft Punk. You went to New York City, that's awesome. You watched anime, stayed up all night, that's a good one. Um, yeah, but yeah, Cage and I, we hung out um, indoors and then we went out for the last like little, little bit of it. And it was super, super fun. Um, and we just watched the fireworks and people were all like, Ow, ow, and like, you know, doing the whole thing. So that was pretty cute. And we like met our neighbors, upstairs neighbors really briefly, cause Cage was howling and they came out and howled a little bit as well. <laughs> so, and it was like, oh, hello. Like, cause we haven't really like met properly yet. So it was really nice to, um, to finally meet them. I'm not still, oh my God. Yeah, my Insta DMs, I'm terrible at keeping up with them. Um, I honestly, I've been, 
not gonna lie, just kind of effed up the face of the earth a little bit with social media. I'm like not the best at social media and I feel really bad about it, but especially since like I've been getting more comments and more DMs, it feels harder to keep up with everything and I feel so bad saying that because it's honestly like so nice to get like um, supports and chats and stuff, um, but it makes me anxious because I can't keep up with it. But I will definitely, maybe that's a New Year's resolution, I've never done New Year's resolutions, but maybe a New Year's resolution for me it could be like keeping up with um, like communications a little bit better. Uh, I know it is a different kind of joy when we feel so like when the new year turns. It, it feels really magical. Um, I'm gonna see if turning the camera around is like a little bit better because this is like kind of, is it just the light? No, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry you guys. You have to deal with my like, okay. What if I do that and that and then that? Is this better, perhaps? Um, can I hear it? Ah! I'm sorry, I don't want to drop you guys. I'm not trying to, it is not my intention. Um, let's see if I can see this on my own thingy, so I can see if it is working. YouTube link, okay. And mute it. Yes, oh my god, that's me, that's so weird to see yourself. I hate that so much, okay, I don't know. Um, oh, and it's also like laggy, so that's like a little bit weird. Well, let me look at the chat. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, is this? Oh, is this still buffering? Hello. Spooky! It's so laggy. Oh no. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm glad it's back, but I'm sorry that it's so laggy. Um, I hope I wasn't, I hope you weren't, I hope I wasn't leaving you guys hanging for too long. I should probably, like, look at the screen and not just the chat to make sure that it's, yeah, but I am back, and it's working. Okay. Okay. But I'm happy to hear about everyone's rad battle jackets. That's, like, so, so exciting and cool to hear, um, because I, because I made a video about one recently, so I have been seeing a couple people tag me on, like, Instagram and stuff showing me their jackets, and it always makes me so happy that you guys are, like, creative and like making stuff out there and like DIYing and upcycling because that is that is the future I don't know I love it so much it makes me so so happy I'm looking for my cup where I keep my makeup but all these cups are cups of tea okay let's see I'm glad that y'all can hear me I hope it's not too laggy um Let's see. Oh, oh my god, I was in top chat the whole time instead of live chat. Silly me. Do you still have my, your Furby? Yes, I still have a bunch of my Um, They are in the quote-unquote craft room, which is more just like a doll room at this point in time because I keep all my Monster High dolls in there and it's like this little, this little army collection and I'm obsessed with it. Um, but yeah, my Furbies live in there too and a couple of trolls live in there and um, honestly one thing, that I'm so excited to show you guys because I've been um, doing a lot of home decor reno stuff um, the this past week and stuff and like since we moved in and one of the things that I did was I put up um, with Cage's help he made a bed frame um, or he made a shelf out of a bed frame and I put up all my trolls all our trolls and I want to go show you guys really quick because it's super exciting sorry so we're gonna go on a little trip while my eyebrows are half done to look at the troll shelf because it is a wonder. Okay, I think it's, aha, I color coded all of it. Um, bye Newt, it was good to have you for a while, but this is the troll shelf and I'm super, super excited for it. Um, or like, yeah, it just makes me really happy every time I look at it. Um, but yes, oh, and here's a quick lemon cam. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show that really quickly because it made me really happy and it was one of the big projects that I achieved um, over this past little time. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to like jostle you while putting you down so much. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to finish my eyebrows. Um, but yeah, New Year's was really nice and chill for me, for us. I made some cookies really late at night that are these like almond crescent cookies. They're my freaking favorite. I've been eating them so much. Um, I love almond cookies, they're the best. Um, are you excited about Monster High coming back? Okay, I have such mixed feelings about Monster High coming back. Sorry if you don't care about Monster High because I'm gonna talk about it for a second. But um, 
obviously the original Monster High loved it a lot. The reboot, not so great. And this second reboot, I'm really scared that it's going to get like the Wink Saga kind of Riverdale like super edgy treatment, which like maybe it's just not for me anymore. And like maybe if I watched it back when I was a little bit younger, I would have been really into it. But a big part of me does that too, because it just feels super cringy. So I'm very worried that they'll make it cringy. But from what I've seen of at least the doll like leaks, supposedly, that have been going up on Instagram, I'm super excited about that. The movie and stuff, I hope it's good, but I'm also very nervous for it. Um, Sarah Russell, oh my god, that's way more trolls than I could, even could expect. Yeah, okay, one time me and Cage went to a Goodwill and we found three giant um, clear garbage bags of trolls and troll stuff, and that's where like the majority of our collection came from, and it was like the happiest day of my life. I, I could have died that day and been very, very happy. Like, it was so cool, the giant amount of garbage bag of trolls, because it was like, big trolls and little trolls and knockoff trolls and like pins and sticker it was awesome um troll shop so cool thank you i made my furby as tall as me probably not king that is so cool i really want to do one day a um longified furby or just like kind of a weird furby in general i want to do more like kind of mutant stuffed animals like kind of like two-headed calves that kind of thing stuffed animals um, I've seen a lot of them on Wine, and I love it, but I've never done them myself, so I would really like to one day. Um, but it's cool that you're doing a long Furby, those are awesome. Uh, yeah, Monster High is awesome. Oh, thank you, Faye Like Scor- Faye Likes Corridors. Sorry, sometimes it takes me 12 years to read things. Thank you for saying you like my hair. Um, I'm really excited for it to wash out. I'm guessing we'll be able to watch the stream back later, right? Yes! Last time I streamed, I accidentally deleted the stream because it had like this loading bar on it and I was like, what's that? Like, I need to delete it. So I deleted it and it deleted the whole stream and I was like, oh. So yeah, I'm not going to do that with this one. This one can stay up. You can stay up. Oh my gosh, Gerard, thank you so much for the 250. You didn't have to do that. Um, that is so sweet. And um, happy new year. Um, I love hearing from fellow like trans and non-binary and like et cetera, et cetera people. Um, that's so sweet. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, Coraline. Oh my god, I love Coraline. Okay, um, who asked that? Sorry. Denki. Oh my gosh, Denki. When I was about 12 years old, I got Coraline from the library, and I would read it over and over and keep checking out, and I, and I read it like nine times, and one time I like cornered my mom and like told her the entire freaking script, and it took like three hours, and it just like flew by for me, but for her it must have been excruciating. I felt so bad when I like... <laughs> think back about that but I was like really into Coraline for quite a long time um and I would just read it over and over and when the movie came out I was like originally not stoked on it because of the animation style but yes I have seen it and I love it now but I love the book even more Neil Gaiman's one of my favorite authors um Megan Vincent I would definitely check my um Instagram messages to see your battle jacket that sounds awesome hey Rabbit, have you watched Rachel Maxi? yeah Ma Maxi. I hope that's how I s how one says it Yes, I have. I really like her stuff, especially like the Halloween kind of pumpkin related stuff. I watched that and I thought it was really cool. Um, one of the things that I have been watching a lot of lately, two YouTubers that I've just been like completely binging their content. One is Elder Goth Jane Wilkes, I think is her channel name. She's so cool. I love her makeup. I love all her DIY stuff, super, super inspiring, completely amazing. The other one that I love that I think a lot of you guys that um, are really interested in like kind of pastel, super cutesy, but also creepy stuff um, is Bunny Buns. Uh, oh my god, I've been completely binging their content as well. I think, yeah, I think I mentioned them already, uh, but I made like a shelf, two shelves so far, inspired by them. Um, and I'm hopefully making a third one tonight, we'll see though. Because I've just been like lagging, like listening to the ch or like talking to the chat and like not doing my makeup and stuff. Um, do, 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 do. It's so nice having you stream on while I'm removing my makeup. Removing makeup is usually so boring. I feel you, Ostbolar. Sorry, I'm like a boomer when it comes to reading um, letter things. But yeah, I think Venus retrograde might be affecting the hair. Perhaps. I love the book like, Yes, agreed, M Amanda. Oh. Huh. Oh my God. I think a, a crossover between me and Rachel would be insane. That'd be so cool. Um, I've just been into Transformers, all, which I guess is metal, literally. Where are all the toys you have? Um, so, my toy collections. I like Furbies. I only have a couple of those. I have a bunch of trolls. Me and my boyfriend like to collect them together. Um, Monster High. 
I have a couple of Novi stars. I freaking love Novi stars. Recently, I got um, some little, what are they called? S Sylvanian families. When I was a kid, my friend had a bunch of them, and I was always like so jealous of her because um, I thought they were so cute. And I found a bunch of them at the thrift store recently, and they work like perfectly with my, um, whatchamacallit, with this old furniture, like this like kind of cute dollhouse furniture. They're like the perfect size for it because they're, it's too small for Monster High doll, so I put them on there, and they're like kind of one of the new things that, I mean, I, I think I got them last year. Also, this is the shelf I did. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I think it's so cool. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, back to makeup. Um, but yeah, Sil Sylvanian families, or however you say it. I love those guys. Oh, that doesn't work. Sorry. I really need to get my leg like, streaming set up for Girdle for sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it in terms of toys I collect. My boyfriend really likes Cupid dolls. I've never really been into baby dolls, but um, I guess that's like a thing that's in our house. But for me, mostly dolls. Oh, and like my OOK -OK dolls in terms of toys I collect. Let's see. Uh, Ostbuller is a Swedish snack. They're really gross. Oh, well, I... <laughs> It's funny that your um, username is something that you think is really gross. That shelf is insanely cute. Thank you. Okay, good night, Megan. Um, very excited that you popped in. Good to see you, of course. Um, yeah, it's so cool. I never thought that I could be a person that like would be able to do live streams because normally I'm like very socially anxious. And even before this started, I had like butterflies. So I was like, oh my god, like this is gonna like that. Ah. You know, I was all stressed out. And it's fine, like, it's like so nice to hang out with you guys, and I don't know what I get anxious for, but I feel like I'm like that about a lot of things. I don't know if y'all are similar, but I always seem to hype myself up in ways of, like, this work event or this party or this thing is gonna be... <laughs> like, I got makeup on my blanket, okay. Like, it's gonna be the worst thing of all time, and how am I ever gonna survive, and I'm gonna hate it, and blah 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 blah, and then you go, and you're like, that was fine, or like, that was kind of fun, or like... It, it, it wasn't the end of the world, and then you feel kind of silly for like being so like complainy and silly over it. Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about, what, like what that even started about. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a thing. What's their Tumblr? My Tumblr is Radistratus3, or Radistratus, I think. I discovered your Tumblr blog back in 2019. You were a massive part of my inspiration to work on being myself. I still get excited when I see your content. It's so good to see. Oh my god, Ayana, that is so, so sweet. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, um, I feel sometimes like I need to get on the new platforms like the Twitch and the, what's the other one, the tic like TikTok and, you know, those kind of ones um, more and like even post on Instagram more, but I'm like still just like a Tumblr bitch at heart. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that's all I do. Uh, it's funny. Um, yeah. I'm very stubborn about things like that. Like I, I, I stick my feet, my heels into one social media and I'm like, this is what I will live with for the rest of my life. So I'm really surprised that I even started YouTube, but I'm really happy I did because this has been like such a cool experience. I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, wow, I've done this for like two years now? That's wild to me. And also I think about the fact that like, I'm really happy I didn't do this when I was like younger cause like, it would have made my anxiety a lot worse, I think, but it's cool to do it when you're, like, older and a little more sure of yourself, and, um, yeah, it's just been, like, such a cool experience, so I, like, recommend, if you think about, if you were thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I would highly recommend it, it's been really cool for me. Um, I was listening to Kenya Dawson, yay, and I love her a lot, I owe you for that. Thank you, Bella, for, like, checking out my recommendations, that's so exciting. Kenya Dawson is seriously one of my favorite people, Cage and I got to see... I actually don't know, I feel like I looked last time for their pronouns, I couldn't figure it out, so I'm just gonna say there. Um, but Cage and I saw one of their shows um, when we first, first started dating, it was like one of the first um, dates we went on um, in 2018, and they were playing with AJJ at like this local bar, and it was so beautiful, and I had never heard their music really before that, like I'd heard it in Juno, but I didn't know it was them, and after we got back from that show, I just like binged like all of their music that I could find on YouTube, and it was just like so good. Um, you're kind and sweet and just so cool. Oh, that's so sweet. Can you explain that on fire stabby heart poster? I'm guessing you're talking about a sacred heart poster? On fire stabby heart poster. Let me see if I can see what's in frame. Mm. Oh! That thing. Uh, it's a sacred heart. It's like a tin.
Indian sign. Um, I think it's from Take to the Grave, which is like this tattoo um, artist company people that my boyfriend really likes. Um, yeah, there's not really an explanation behind it. Other, sorry, I'm trying to like get a piece of my shirt to dab my eye. Um, there's not really an explanation behind it for me. It's like kind of a Catholic imagery thing, but I think Kay just thinks it looks cool. He's really into the more traditional styles of tattoos, like the older stuff, so I think it's kind of that vibe. Um, Wikipedia says our pronouns are she they. Thank you, Amy. Um, the TikTok, haha, <laughs> I relate. Um, I wanted to say that I really love your style and you have encouraged me to pursue my word as a Oh my gosh, purple bunny fox, I'm so proud of you for um, being like more encouraged to like do your own style thing. That's like so, so exciting. I love to hear that. Honestly, life is so short. And if you can like dress in the fun fashions you want and like try out different ones, I think there is nothing better than being able to do that. If that's what you want to do, it's so much fun. Uh, thanks, it's super neat. Yes, I have two tattoos. My boyfriend did both of them. Um, well, actually I have three tattoos if you count my freckle tattoos, which are super faded. Like, I don't know if y'all can see it now, uh, but I need to get them redone soon. Um, but Sydney, who does them, she's out of town. She's in Kelowna doing her own thing right now. Um, so I need to wait till she's back. Um, the two tattoos that I have on my legs, um, one of them is a jackalope and the other one is a periton. So it's basically a rabbit with horns and a deer with wings. I can show you guys really quick. I'm wearing um, shorts underneath my um, pants, so I'm not like flat. Oh, low power mode. So I'm not stripping if I show you guys, I promise. Let me just plug in my phone though first. Um, ba -da -ba -boom. Oh, I think I need an extension cord. Okay, we're gonna go on a trip to find the extension cord because my phone is at a low battery and my knees are popping and cracking. Okay. I hope that like walking around my house doesn't make people nauseous. I hope you can look away if it does. Um, because I feel like it would make me nauseous if I was watching a stream where people were walking around. I used to watch this guy who did, like, streams walking around. Sorry, I can't find the freaking plug-in for this. Um, but he would get, like, so out of breath that it would be a little distracting. I guess I get a little out of breath when I stream or talk in my videos as well sometimes. Like right now, <laughs> while I'm struggling to plug in the extension. <sighs> I'm sorry, I should have gotten this all figured out before I started. We are professional streamers here. We only do professional, professional things. Okay. Uh, unfroze. There we go. Okay, I'm happy we're back. I'm glad you guys didn't have to walk with me through that, hopefully. Uh, my phone is on spinning. Alright. Um, oh yeah, but I was talking about my tattoos. Um, so this is them. Let me just stand up so I can show you guys. And yes, I'm wearing shorts, as I have stated. Um, this is the jackalope. It also has a Venus symbol and a moon. And Cage did it for me, like, within our first like, couple months of dating, which is crazy when I think about it. And then this is the periton, which is, like, the fawn with um, wings, and it has a little Aquarius symbol. And um, my next tattoo is going to be either a bat or a rat. Um... And I'm very excited for those. Um, whatever they may be. Um, but yeah, I think Sydney's gonna do that one because Cage is like, I can't be the only one doing your tattoos. He's like, it stresses me out, like, tattooing people that I love because it's like a lot of pressure. So I can imagine that. Those tattoos are beautiful. Thank you. If you like the work, you should check out my boyfriend on Instagram. His handle is Cage, C A I G E dot Baker. Like, Baker. Yeah, he's really cool. I love him. Um, quick thought about YouTubers who only do fast fashion videos. Um, it It's hard because I think a lot of them are young. Um, so, like, I can understand 
Uh, I feel like that's like such an excuse though for like sustainability and stuff because I really love um, upcycling and thrifting and recycling and like this kind of thing. But I also was lucky enough to grow up in a household that really, really like pushed that on me and stuff. Um, am I frozen still? Come on. Okay. Hopefully not. Let me refresh this and see if I'm still frozen. Okay, yeah, I think I'm okay. Um, but whatchamacallit, yeah. So I think a lot of people that do fast, only fast fashion videos, they're young, and like I get it. And the thing with fast fashion is like, if you are going to be wearing it a lot and like using it all the time, and like you also, it's the only thing you have accessible, like what is there to like criticize about that? Like it's just people living their life. Um, and I feel like lots of times when people um, put the onus of like big problems such as fast fashion and stuff on individual consumers it's like a very neoliberal way of, this is like getting so stupid but it's like a very like, neoliberal way of thinking that like puts all the onus on individuals so that we don't have to actually look at like the bigger societal problem of what's like contributing to that and why people have low wages and why things are like produced in like such scummy conditions and stuff um so i think it can sometimes be a little bit of a distraction tactic if we like focus too much on individuals who are doing specific things when they're just one person and them like stopping doing fast fashion videos wouldn't like stop the sweatshops from existing and stuff like that in the reality of things uh but things we can do that are more productive about that is like educate ourselves write to people who are in power you know it it's it's a lot it's like kind of stressful to think about how messed up our world is right now um Okay, yeah, so Purple Funny Fox, uh, my boyfriend, the way he got started, he was originally, so he went to art school and he dropped out of art school because um, one of the people that worked at a tattoo artist was like, I'll do your apprenticeship, like you'll work here for free and like learn under me and stuff and then eventually you'll work at the shop and like do commissions and stuff and when you start, it's a lot of like crap work, it's a lot of grunt work um, from what I hear, like it's a lot of mopping and not doing stuff and like photocopying and this and that. And then eventually through apprenticeships and i've like also thought about how apprenticeships are like very abusive like power dynamics i like i know that word has like a lot of so maybe uh very harmful potentially harmful power dynamics when you're doing a bunch of unpaid labor for someone um just in the hopes that like one day they'll like teach you that skill like when cage was telling me about that i was like that sucks and that does not sound very ethical and he was like well that is just how it is so um i guess apprenticeship um, before you get an apprenticeship, try to practice your drawing as much as you can because from what I understand, like drawing is very key to tattooing. Um, and don't be afraid to use references. A lot of people use references, um, especially when you're starting out and learning like basic shapes and lines. There's a lot of like really old classic tattoo art that is great for references because the people that have created it are long since dead and it's kind of like open source sort of thing from what I, I'm like not that, like I just hear things from Cage sometimes, I'm like not the most like understanding of it, uh, but yeah, it's like, um, yeah, apprenticeships, practice your drawing, and I hope you can find like a apprentice person, mentor that treats you well. Um, oh, thank you, Bella. Oh, good night, Ostablor, I hope you have a nice night. Hold corporations accountable. Yes, CPT care, kerosene, long story short, capitalism sucks 100%. And it's like shit, it's crappy because we all are in the system together. And lots of times when like the bickering and infighting, it just distracts us from like the larger people that we could hold accountable. So, yeah, okay. Uh, Robin Frog, I just want to say thank you for helping me out with my podcast. Oh, Robin Frog, you are so sweet. I'm so happy to hear that um, your confidence has improved and stuff. I think it's like so hard, especially in the world we live now, to love yourself and have confidence and really proudly be yourself. So congrats on you for doing that. It's really hard sometimes, but it's so rewarding and so worth it. And I am so thankful that I get to be myself and stuff and like have you guys on here to like talk to you and be myself with and y'all can be yourself with stuff. It's the best. You're making a sword from an old sheet music stand? That is so cool. Holy cow. Um, I always thought the DIYing would always turn out bad, but no, it has always turned out well and made me love my clothes more and wear them for longer. Thank you. Oh my god, Frog, that's so cool. I agree with you. Sometimes it can be very scary to DIY because you're like, what if I destroy this piece? 
But as soon as you just like let go of that fear and are like, whatever, if I destroy it, then I destroy it and it's a piece of fabric and I'll live, then it always ends up super cool. And it's like very exciting what you can do when you like let yourself be creative like that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Did your lip piercing hurt? I want to get mine done, but I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> I always find it funny when people ask if piercings hurt because to me, like, obviously they would hurt because it's like a needle going through your skin. And I've always known people who are like, my piercing didn't hurt. It just tickled. And I'm like, you're lying. Like, if someone poked you with a thumbtack, you wouldn't say like, oh, that just tickled. Like, obviously it hurts. But it's like a second or like a couple seconds of like very sharp pain and then like a lot of like a little bit of swelling and then it's fine um so i highly recommend lip piercings i think it's so much fun one thing that i will say is i've chipped my front tooth on one of them to play with the lip ring all the time and also i have people tell me all the time that i'm gonna get a really bad scar under my lip but whatever that's that's life i don't i don't really care i like the lip ring um but i highly recommend piercings in general yes they hurt but they're super worth it um oh my god it like scrolled down super fast um any resources for not for becoming not trash at makeup um yeah oh no did i freeze again hello okay no i think i'm okay sorry i can never tell because sometimes my um computer on this side that i'm like monitoring will get leggy and then um whatever y'all it doesn't matter um so my tips for being not bad at makeup um firstly practice a thing that i used to love to do not like love to do but a thing that i found fun um uh, back when i was like learning makeup when i was like 12 13 14 was i would do my makeup at night before i was gonna go to bed because that way if it looked really bad i was just gonna take it off anyway and like go straight to bed and if it didn't look bad then i can like take you pictures and be like okay this is like what i like so um that also, um, a lot of things, for me, I've been like, oh, this makeup looks bad on me. And then I find out that it looks bad on me or like what I perceive as bad because the, like my eye shape or my lip shape was like not, you, it didn't really work with like the look. So like if you find out what um, eye shape you have, for example, I have like pretty hooded eyes. So if I do, like I, I can't do my, my eyeliner like most people or like the normal way because, um, it, it looks really messy so I have to do it like this this weird way so sometimes it's just about like learning your face and and practicing a lot but um practice before bed and also I really like essence products because they're cruelty free and they're super cheap and they're good quality so I would highly recommend that um but G G Giselle Car 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 oh my god I hate <laughs> pronouncing things I sound so white but I'm sorry that you didn't get the notification but hello hello um Good evening, thank you, Loop. Hello, critical condition. Um, where is this energy coming from? I don't made gloves out of a skull primer and socks and now adding spikes. Dead emo, that sounds awesome. I'm super happy to hear that. Believe this is the first time I'm seeing your forehead. My forehead? I feel oh yeah, I usually wear bangs. But not when I'm doing my makeup. Nope. This is um this is also how I do my hair when I'm going to work. I look like a dork when I'm at work. I hate it, but it's fine. I like don't want um a bunch of hair in my coffees that I'm making. Hello, Do hi, Gerhardt. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you in the chat. I I, I went to school with her. She's awesome. Um, I miss you. I hope you're doing good. Um, is you okay? I'm glad I'm not frozen. Okay, guitar. Every time I think of getting mouth piercing, I just think of pick up teeth being horrible from mouth. Yeah, like chipped and stuff. My um my boyfriend had his these done, and I've wanted them so bad for so long and he's like I refuse like you cannot get them because for him they were the most painful most like agonizing healing process and he was like they were just always like full of pus and like I'm saying this because I love you like do not get your cheeks pierced but I really like the dimples that they leave so he has told me that there's um there's some people that do like a surgery where they just surgically give you dimples without doing the piercings because the main reason I'd be getting those in the first place would be for the dimples afterwards but yeah I get it mouth piercings can be really really horrible I've been really lucky with these two but yeah uh, uh, I got a pure white sweater for Christmas and it kind of gives me dysphoria okay angel angel with pure white clothing have you considered dyeing it black a 
B, cutting it up, C, putting safety pins on it, and or D, um, putting patches on it. Those are like three things that I could recommend right off the bat. Um, if it's like a super tight sweater, or like there's just like something about the shape that makes you feel dysphoric, or it's like a turtleneck, or like for whatever reason you don't like it, just donate it. Like I feel like we have such a thing of like, well someone gave this to me so I can't donate it. Um, hold on to it for a couple months, and then quietly get rid of it. There's there there's no reason someone would want you to have to have to like hold on to a gift that you didn't like just because they gave it to you. So if you can't alter it, I would get rid of it. But if it's like nice and you're just like, I just don't like the color or like these small things about it, then you can make it a little more hopefully suited to your style. Oh my gosh, Teal Tamuji, that's really cute. Oh my god. Uh, snake bites. Raven's on snake bites are so cool. I remember when I was 14, all I wanted was snake bites. Or is it called spider bites when there's two of them? Because there was like snake bites and angel bites and spider bites. And I would literally just go online and like Google diagrams of all the different type of lip piercings and like fantasize about like one day when I'm not living with my parents, I'll be able to pierce my face however I want. Um, and I've only gotten, I mean, I had my this for a while, but I've only gotten like three. It's it's wild. I, I need to I need to catch up. Um, good night, Robin Frog. I hope you have a lovely night. Any tips on how to find become involved in local punk scenes? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's hard with COVID. Hmm. Okay. Not COVID. Not <laughs> withstanding. Um, definitely check out if there's like shows, local shows, um, all ages shows. I remember when I was growing up, there was a place that would do all ages like punk and rock shows and it was like my favorite thing because it was the only place in the city that did that. It was like above a tattoo parlor and it doesn't exist anymore which is very very sad but it was really cool when it was a thing. Um, also getting involved in like local political activity like organizing um, with like food not bombs or like just helping out at like soup shelters and doing like political activism stuff in that way. It's always a great punk thing that I recommend. I know that sounds so corny but like for real. Um, writing to like local prisoners and stuff that's a great thing that can help you know this the system not be so oppressive for people. Um, that kind of thing. Um, also zine fairs. If there aren't zine fairs see if you can organize one. If you're still in school I feel like it would be so cool to organize like a student zine fair. Um, which am I call it? What other things can you do um, to get involved in your local punk scene? I am like not great with social media and I would probably like not recommend posting too much about like looking for friends of like punk friend because like that could be dangerous so maybe don't do that. Um, let me think. Yeah, mostly like check out music shows and check out ways that you can like help your local community and like volunteer and stuff and those are two very cool very punk things I recommend. Um, any tips for public being coming out? My close family and partner know I'm non-binary, but that's it. Oh man, Willow, I feel that. I feel like um, coming out is not a thing in my experience that is like one and done. Like I feel like I'm constantly doing it and like constantly correcting people and stuff, which, um, which one we call it, can be like a little bit stressful. Um, wearing like jewelry patches, pins that say like they, them, t-shirts like mine from Monarchs of Mars. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I will link them when the stream finishes if I remember because I'm obsessed with this shirt and it does help me from getting misgendered sometimes. So um, yeah, wearing clothing and stuff with like very loud and proud um, stuff on it. But honestly, like I get misgendered at work all the time and I'm like, whatever. Like I, I just I just kind of desen I've desensitized myself to that part of it. So I don't have great tips um, for it, but I'm very proud that you came out to your like family and partner and stuff. Um, but with me, like when I um, decided to like come out as non-binary at work, we have like a work Facebook page and I was like, hey, please use they them pronouns for me now. And that was that. But like for a lot of people, it's not that easy, especially if you're still in school, there's not like a way you can like go on the PA system and that would be really weird for anyone to do. So it, it kind of seems sometimes like it's a thing of like slowly, like people slowly understand that you're non-binary and then we'll correct each other. And like, I have so many friends that like, when introducing me will be like, oh, and this is rabbit and the pronouns are they, them. Or like if 
their new friend that I met like misgenders me, they'll be like, oh, actually, their pronouns are they. Like, you know, and it's like really chill and easy. Um, it can be really hard sometimes to stand up for yourself when you're getting misgendered. It can be really nice to ask um, if your partner or whatever is like comfortable with it, or if your parent or whatever is comfortable with it, to be like, hey, like, would you be able to back me up on this or whatever? Um, my boyfriend's always been really sweet about um, correcting people very like gently but just saying like there if anyone says like she with me and it's like really I don't know it makes me feel really like safe and respected um so just like gently correcting people but I get it like coming out can be hard and it feels like it never ends honestly local gardening communities oh heck yeah oh my gosh bereavement thank you so much you didn't have to send me five dollars that's so sweet though um but hello I, I I appreciate the love you message that's so sweet I wish I could come out but I would literally get hate crime I am sorry to hear that, Captain Kerosene. I wish I had, like, advice for people that live, like, in very... Because I, like, I'm so lucky to live in, like, a very chill community and stuff that is whatever. But I genuinely, I can't say anything other than I'm sorry. And I wish I could give you a hug. Ugh. Just tell someone to spread the word. Hell yeah. I had a friend, a fellow non-binary friend in university. We're, like, still friends, Ren. I love them. Um, I need to freaking reply to them back. Um, because they always send me the sweetest voice notes on Facebook, and then I'm terrible at listening to voice notes. Um, but, yeah, they were the best. They would always, like, just go out and, like, correct people for me and, like, tell people, and it was, it was my favorite thing. You get better at tarot the more you use the deck. I do daily card pulls along with seasonal readings. Heck, yeah, Giselle. G Giselle. I'm gonna go with Giselle. Daily card pulls are easy. Heck, yeah, I have, oh, it's not with me here. But I have this tarot deck that I've been using a lot that's the Astara tarot deck and it has this beautiful kind of rabbit insect lady on it and I really like it a lot. Um. Oh, teal! That's so cute! <laughs> um, angel, angel, if you're with today as a turtle I can kind of fit it. I'm considering dyeing brown and cropping it. I like that idea. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that cool thing where you like crop the sweater and then add like all the chains and stuff at the bottom. That's very cool. Gerard Euro, yes, I actually work at a coffee shop, and I drink a lot of coffee while I'm there, and um, I'm very much a coffee person. Right now I'm drinking tea, um, but I love coffee. There's ways to stretch out sweaters too. Sen Second thing, Ren is absolutely the best of people. Yes, I love them so much. Uh, hi, I love your face. Thank you, Sunny. Zero, hi, I'm doing really well. It's been nice to um, be on live tonight. Mm. Yeah, super cool. Giselle, I'm so happy I said your name right. I'm using a herbal deck. Good to find a deck that applies to your hobbies and interests. Absolutely. One time, uh, someone gifted me a cat's tarot deck. It was like magic cats, or, like some beautiful cat tarot deck. And I, it was so cool. It felt like so me. Um, how old are you? Because you're like an alt founding father. Or red is gender neutral. <laughs> you're so cute. Um, I'm 23. I've been alt for about 10 years, but I've always like cycled between being like more goth, more punk, more pastel, more like, like, you know, like different um, things at different times. But I've been generally dressing alternative for 10 years. Um, I wouldn't call myself a founding father at all. Like there's people from the 80s and like 60s that have been doing it for like way longer. But that's so sweet that you say that. Oh my God, I love you. Dead emo. Gotta go. This was a great stream. Oh, hope everyone has a great day. I'm like, oh, bye dead emo. I hope you have a lovely night. Thank you for um, popping in. Jax, thank you so much. I also love my shirt. I think it's super cool. Um, it's also super soft. Y'all should check out this person. I think they have a, I don't know if it's a big cartel or, I think I definitely already put mascara off because my lashes feel crunchy. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, but yeah, I, I finally dyed my hair pink. I wanted it to be more pastel, but it turned out very hot pink. But I'm finally going to style it um, since I washed it. Oh, I can't see. Okay. And by style it, I mean put my bangs, pull my bangs out of it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and my glasses. I can finally put my glasses back on. Ooh, stream for while I crochet like Christmas presents. That's so cute. Oh my gosh, for Christmas, um, I not knitted, oh, sewed. I sewed a bunch of, um, what should I call it, little like patches for my family mem members and I've been like meaning to make some spooky ones. I think it'll be really, really fun. 
Uh, I think it's, oh, thank you. It's 3.44 in South Africa. Oh, I hope it's like 3.44 in the afternoon and not in the morning because I'd feel bad if you were staying up till 4. Your hair is so pretty. Could you explain how it's so curly? Yeah, so um, my bangs, I don't do anything with. So this is like my natural hair texture. And this part, I use rollers, like foam rollers. After I wash my hair, roll them up, go to bed, come out, and they are like creepy doll curls. The curls? <laughs> creepy doll curls the first day and then the second day it looks all like fun and like this and then sometimes I don't know where my comb is but I will tease my hair sometimes Aha. tease my hair just like doo, 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 doo. you know um kind of like emo kids did back in the day and then I'll like use my hairspray to just make it be like a little rat nest um how do you reply to people, lol? Um, I've been reading uh, Top Chat, or if you're asking how you reply to people, I think you can at their username. I just want to mention you helped me as a trans woman. To be oh my gosh, Hayden, that is so sweet and very, very awesome. I'm so happy to hear that like you are like being more comfortable in yourself. That's so cool. Uh, oh, Jax, that's so cool that you're making a sweater. Oh, bye, River Draws. I hope you have fun with your friend. 3.45 in the morning. Oh my gosh. I Well, I'm glad that you're here if you can't sleep. If it's not too much talk, could you show me the curlers? Yeah, for sure. Let me go grab one. Um, oh yeah, I have my phone with me. Actually, my bathroom's really not clean right now, so let me just grab one. Hi, so... Um, it's kind of like purple a little bit because I dyed my hair and like the hair dye transferred a bit, but basically the curlers are a thing that looks like this. I got it at the dollar store. It's like a foam part and a plastic part. And basically when your hair's wet, you like do this and like roll it up and like clip it into place at the top. And yeah, so it's like very chill. I think I have like a hair tutorial from like a year ago on my channel because I used to get questions about my hair. On Tumblr and I was like, I'm gonna make a video. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, I love that dust behind you. Oh, dude, I freaking love it too. It's so cool. Um, the top part was actually like a headboard, um, but it was too heavy to put above our bed. Um, I was like too scared that it would like fall on us in our sleep, but it worked perfectly as like a little desk backdrop. I think it's really cool. Um, Oh my gosh, y'all are staying up so late. Oh my goodness. I really want to be a lawyer and prove my community, but I love Altstall. Does anyone think it hinders them in the workforce? Oh my gosh, the Muffin Man, I love that for you. And from what I've heard, I think there's a lot of people that can be like corporate goth or like punk and also a lawyer or like have these things, but I but I don't know because because that's not me. I guess it probably depends on like the kind of community that you're living in. I'm gonna go to the craft room. I will bring you guys with me, but now that the makeup's done, I can I can do that. So let's traverse. Um, let's do this. Let me flip. Hello. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, but I put down. And here we are. Let me set this up. It's only 8.48 here. Okay, good. I'm glad that not everyone is being a hooligan and staying up till 3 in the morning, even though I also have my times of being a hooligan and staying up till 3 in the morning. Sorry, I'm going to grab my laptop so that I can keep reading what you guys are saying. Because on my phone, it is a light. Goodbye, Tuna. Sleep tight. She hasn't moved from her spot. And I got my tea, and remove them here at this very flattering angle. Hi. Okay. Are you Canadian? Yes, I am. How could you tell? Totally not a hooligan, but it's still only 2 a.m. Oh, yay, yeah, yeah. Um, what time is it here for me? It is 6.49 p.m. at night today, right now, as we speak. I'm just gonna assume everyone in the chat can't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> probably if if it's if it's up if we're all up that late. Not we because not me, but you know what I mean. Um, come on, laptop. Okay, 
Uh, man, some people dress like more professionally for the interview and when they get accepted they dress the way they want to. Yes. When I started at the cat cafe, I like came in my interview with like black hair and then as soon as I got the job, I like dyed it purple. But then it like didn't matter because all my coworkers were like really cool like alternative people with like lots of tattoos and dyed hair and I was like, oh, what, what was I worried about? Um, um, is to combine your preferred look with a more business casual one, or at least my, yeah, that's fair. It's a bit off topic, but I got two basic Lagunas and they are so stunning. Oh my god, Laguna is like a very cool doll. I love, um, the concept of like a black lagoon monster. When I was a kid, I think there was a book, like a kind of children's book series called like The Creature from the Black, R no, The Teacher from the Black Lagoon, maybe? And I sometimes think of Laguna with that. It was fun. Mm. Okinawa. No, this is my first stream. I was gonna say of the year, but obviously, because it's January 1st. Um, no, I've only done like one live stream before, and I think it was last year around my birthday. Um, I would like to stream more, but <laughs> I always get so anxious, and I always like hype myself up, thinking that it's gonna be like so stressful and that I like won't have things to say or that I don't know what I get stressed out about but it's always fun so I should definitely stream more but um no I have not in the past this is my first stream but it'll stay up and um y'all can rewatch it if you're interested yes the Black Lagoon series I want <laughs> I want the whole book series for the nostalgia lol dude okay the other book series that I was thinking about the other day I don't know if anyone else read it when they were kids okay because when I was a kid I was really into like Lemony Snicket but there was this other one I don't remember what it was called, but basically the premise of it, in it, the kids had like evil ants, like A-U-N-T's, but they were also ants, A-N-T's, like, so they were like these massive like humanoid monsters, and I think the kids were twins? Does anyone know what this is? Either way, I remember this book series, and I was so nostalgic for it, and I don't remember what it is, but it like has such a strong place in my heart. The aunts? Maybe? That actually sounds very familiar, Gearheart. Maybe. <laughs> Please dream whenever you like. Thank you. I have a Dracula doll and she comes with like a battery. Dude, I know which one you're talking about. The Dracula, I think either the diner one or there was like one that came with an accessory a set that was a battery, or the Creepyteria one. She's really cool. They both are. Um, yes, Gearheart. Oh my god. I'm so glad that we're both, that we both know that series. It was like so good. Like I love um, like those things that like get kids into the alt stuff like really young like ruby gloom and like that kind of thing like it emily the strange oh my god i have like such heavy nostalgia for emily the strange i've been wanting to make a um plushy kind of emily the strange situation but i don't know how yet like i don't know which one i want to make yet i gotta go oh okay well bye ayana thanks for popping in are you excited for the 2022 monster high revamp i think i mentioned this a little bit before that I'm nervous, but excited. I really don't want it to get the Winx um, Riverdale treatment where it gets like super edgy and kind of, you know? Um, so I, I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen. Do you watch Ashton Daniel? I don't know who that is. Finally move the blade part of the sheet stand so I can start cutting it. Guitaric, your um, freaking sword is gonna be so cool. I'm really stoked for you. Ruby Gloom, yes, Ruby Gloom. Such nostalgia for me. Um, yeah, I, I, same with like Monster High, like it's like the kind of spooky kids shows. It's, it's my favorite. It's so good. Such a good combination. Yes, oh my god, I love all the Ruby <laughs> Clue nostalgia in the chat right now. Does anyone like Happy Tree Friends? I remember being scared of Happy Tree Friends when I was a kid, I'm not gonna lie. I also, one that I just found out about recently, thanks to my boyfriend, is Salad Fingers. I was not growing up with that, but apparently that was like a big cultural phenomena for a lot of people. But I was like way too sheltered living in my little like hippie lifestyle with my parents <laughs> to like watch that when I was a kid. Oh yes, Emily the Strange is so good. Oh, Gerhardt, I completely agree. Please do an Emily Illustrate. Yeah, okay, because I was on Facebook Marketplace a while ago and there was someone selling, like, I think it was a, th I think they called it Thin Lizzie was like one of the plushes, but then there was this other one that was Emily the Stranger's cat, with, but it was all like made of patchwork and it was so cool and I didn't get it, but I should have, and now I'm like, I need to make that. It was so cool. Um, same with the other one. Oh, I really loved um, Skill Animals, like the plushies that were like, a black silhouette with like the skeleton bones and I think they had a heart. Um, I miss those. I was looking for them on eBay a while ago and I didn't really find any. Um, but one day I will make my own school animal. 
I was allowed to watch Monster High or Bratz. I always wanted to, lol, wish I had those memories. Okay, now what? That is so sad. I hope that you can watch them now and like even though they won't be childhood memories, they can still be those like nostalgia memories because I'm not gonna lie, I didn't start watching Monster High until I was 20 something. And I think that like a part of that for me was that when I was a kid, I was really nervous about seeming like too childish or like too yeah basically like I was super embarrassed that like someone would see my stuffed animals and be like oh my god rabbit's like a baby or whatever you know like I, I was really nervous about that kind of thing and now I'm like whatever <laughs> like I'm 23 I can watch children's cartoon and, it, and it, it, it it like literally doesn't matter like no one cares um so yeah I get for different reasons not watching kind of that stuff as a kid because when I was a kid I was like I'm too cool for this um, but now I'm like no I love it like what, what was I thinking I was too cool for so um yeah I think it's still completely possible to get that like childhood joy and nostalgia for it even if you didn't watch it as a kid because I did so maybe you can too I hope you can yeah I wanna because I love the creativity heck yeah totally um it can be <laughs> I'm not gonna lie it can be kind of hard to watch children's cartoons that have like kind of that were made earlier and have like kind of toxic messaging and you're like as an adult because your adult brain is like this is problematic but if you shut that part off your brain for a while and are just like haha fun and bright colors it, c it can be like a good time so giving us this low-key asmr for me okay captain kerosene i'm sorry that's so funny i miss the 13 wishes time so much yeah 13 wishes is a really cute movie i love fawn in that movie i really want um to make a doll of fawn especially because she has like hoof hands yeah. Hmm. Dead Emo's back! Thank you for coming back! That's so cool! Do y'all remember Marble Hornets? I can't say I do. I don't know what that is. I want to adventure time with my partner. Oh, I hope you can do that. Um, Valent? Valent? Either way, that sounds really fun. I remember I had a lot of friends in high school that were really into Adventure Time. Um, recently, Cage and I watched Over the Garden Wall, and I was obsessed with that one. The other one that I love that Cage introduced me to was Bee and Puppy Cat, which is like a YouTube series. I bet you can still find it on YouTube. And I don't know if they were going to make a new series of it soon, because they were, they were always a little bit slow with production. But their stuff was so cute. I freaking loved Bee and Puppy Cat. Oh my god. Um, yay, I'm happy that Daddy Mo feels love. That's really cute. Um, a lot of my parents only let me watch PBS Kids. And now I'm a cottage core lesbian. The shows we watched as a kid really affect our personality. Absolutely, Katie Romsberg. Um, hundred percent. I like look at all of the weird fairy books I had as a kid, and how into like fairy tales and like kind of elfy aesthetics and stuff like that that I'm in now. And I'm like, yeah, that, uh, it tracks. Be a puppy cat, yay! I'm happy that other people like be a puppy cat. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Uh, Marvel Hornets is a Blair Witch esque YouTube series, which is part of the 2020. Oh, Slender Man. Yes, yes, I remember Creepypasta. That's also very nostalgic for me. I remember there were like all those Creepypasta challenge kind of things where um, it would be like put a bunch of hoodies on hangers and hang them around your room and then turn off the lights and go to bed and it like looks like there's a bunch of people in your room and I was always like reading those like why would you do this to yourself like it sounds like the worst time I love being puppy guy they're gonna go on Netflix this year okay that's so cool speaking of Netflix not that I usually like to like be like ooh Netflix is but okay you know the chocolate guy, um, the, the, that guy that always does those really crazy chocolate sculptures? He made this Netflix series that's called The School of Chocolate. His name's like Anton, Anton, something, it's so good. Oh my god, if you haven't watched it, School of Chocolate's so good. Oh, I love it. Be and Puppy Cat Lazy in Space is done but not released yet. That's so cool. I'm really excited for that. Okay, bye Okinawa. Um, I hope you stream again soon. I hope I stream again soon too. This was really, really fun. I don't know how long I'll be on, but it's it's been really chill. Um, hi, hello, hello, um, Macy Anderson. I remember being so terrified of Jeff. <laughs> Jeff the, what, what was it Jeff? I, I know it wasn't Jeff the Ripper. Was it Jeff the Killer? Question mark? I remember there was like fan fiction about that. Have you watched The Owl House or Infinity Train? Both of those sound familiar. I feel like Owl House has kind of it into over the garden wall vibes. If it does, then I think I've seen it, but not like very clearly. Like I wasn't paying attention as much as I should have. Dude, I would always watch Demon Universe and Adventure Time, and now I'm gay and depressed at emo. I always.
also love Steven Universe. My friend Ren actually introduced me and Cage to that one, and we would just like binge it um, in our first year of dating. Like he would come over um, to my dorm room, and I'd live really tiny bed, and we would just squeeze on the tiny bed and watch Steven Universe, and it was so much fun. Um, um, this is my first dream I've been a part of. Oh, purple butterflies! You guys are all so nice and welcoming. Oh. I'm so happy, I agree. Um, my chat, though I've only had two streams, has always been so nice and so welcoming and like I just really appreciate that I have this like safe space with you guys. I know sometimes I get comments that are like, you're my safe space, but like, not to be all cringy, but like sometimes I feel like y'all are my safe space and it's like so cool that I have like a little thing that I can just like put videos on and people can't, like that's weird, it's weird. Uh, like, because, yeah. The other thing that I've been thinking about with like, I don't want to say being a YouTuber, but like making YouTube content is that like I'm just some guy, like literally just some guy, and like so is all the YouTubers that I watch because I like see myself being just some guy, like getting up in the morning, like making tea, going to work, like just being boring. And I think about it, I'm like, wow, like the people that I watch on YouTube that I super admire are like probably also just like doing really mundane stuff. And it's weird because when you watch YouTubers, you only watch like a little part of their life. But I like, I'm like, yeah, no, I, mm, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole weird thing. That was a whole thing. Does anyone remember LPS? Littlest Pet Shops, yes! Ah, uh, Littlest Pet Shops, my friend had such a big collection of Littlest Pet Shops. One thing that I had a fairly big collection of, sorry, I'm like really having fun with the nostalgia talk, um, was Hamtaro, my cousin, who's Italian, all, all my like family's, extended family, whatever is Italian, when I was a kid, she gave me all her Hamtaro collection and it was so many and I still have a couple of them. I kept the white Hamtaro with the little pigtails. I don't remember any of their names. I kept, I think he was like a black and white Hamtaro with a green hat. I kept him and then I kept like the main Hamtaro, like the orange and white one. Uh, those are fun. Um, highly recommend 90s adaptation of the Moomins. Yes, 100%. Um, I have like a little, little my mug. It's my favorite thing, it's so cute. I never watched any of the stereotypical gay shows when I was younger. I grew up on PBS. Oh wait, no, I already read that. PBS Kids and MLP and I'm still gay, depressed, and non-binary. Hey, Macy, I feel ya. Ballant, I'm so happy that you feel safe here. I finished the first season, it's really good. Highly recommend a good adventure show. Good to hear. Mutual safe spacery, yay. Um, hello, highly recommend 90s, uh, yeah, okay. Did you stream it on Netflix? Netflix? The Jeff Lee Taylor story is a bit overrated, but the picture is really scary and an overly photoshopped image of a person who committed uh oh, that's not good. That's not good, frog. Um, streams are like a comfy, happy online house. I know, because I love watching streamers, and like I was saying, I think at the beginning of the last stream that I tried to do, but then it messed up because I couldn't figure out my camera. I'll try to get that figured out next time, so when I do it um, next time, it's a better quality. Um, but, whatchamacallit, live streams are so cool. I love watching other people's live streams. And for the past like week, I kept being like, I'm gonna live stream tonight, I'm gonna live stream tonight. And then I would just watch someone else's live stream and not do any myself. So I was like, finally tonight, January 1st, I can do it, it'll be a thing, it's nice. Has anyone gone to N Circle? It's a gay hangout place and safe space. It's only in Utah right now. Okay, I'm really happy that something like that exists in Utah. Cause from what I understand, it can be a little bit hard for like queer people. Um, in those kind of spaces, so yay to in circle. How radically affirming and mutually supportive so many subsections of queer culture are has been one of my absolute and unexpected joys since coming up. Yes, Gerhardt, I completely agree with you. I love wearing just like a little, like my little like non-binary flag earrings that like one of my, um, one of you guys actually sent me recently. Like I love wearing those out and just like other queer people like seeing that and recognizing that and like nodding and smiling and it's just like, it makes me so happy. It's kind of the same thing if you wear like alternative fashion. I feel like if you see another alternative fashion person out and about, you'll like see them and like kind of like, oh, and, like you give them the nod or like the like, oh yeah, like I see you. And it's like my favorite thing when you like see people that you resonate with that are just strangers and you'll probably never see each other again, but you have that little like mutual, mutual recognition. It's my favorite. Oh. That's so cute that in Finland every house has Moomin mugs. The one that I got was from this thrift store that I used to volunteer at. It was my favorite thing. It was like such a little cute one. Mm -hmm. Captain Kerosene, I hate jump scares. I don't know why people like go out of their way to be to, like scare other people. Like why would you do that? Uh, you get the energy that you give. You give us a safe space, we give you one. Thank you, Muffin Man. I think you're right. It's very, very nice to just have this mutual community. Um, I just changed my username and profile picture for the first time and now I'm testing if it worked. It worked! Yay, central level, central level. Hmm. Your stream feels so safe.
life. It's nice to be openly queer here. I love to hear that. That's seriously like my goal. Um, Raspberry, do you have a P.O. box? I certainly do. It is linked in my descriptions, I think, and I'll link it in this one too when I um, upload it. Seeing other alt people makes my day. Agreed? Especially? I get such euphoria when I see like an older art alt person. Like when I see like someone in their 50s or 60s with like goth makeup or like a mohawk, it like my heart explodes and I'm like I want to be that so bad one day like it makes me happy because I feel like so much of our culture and stuff like really glamorizes this like young thing and like has this idea of like well you can't dress like scene or emo or whatever whatever past like being a teenager and that's so untrue and when I see other people like rejecting that it makes me so happy I like literally want to scream and hug them it's the best does anyone remember Maya and Miguel I have not heard of that but I wonder if anyone else does. I'm completely down for horror and eerie stuff, but jump scares all feel so cheap and annoying rather than genuine terror. Yes, Nate Warner, you get it. I had a best friend when I was in, um, not, uh-oh, low power mode. Hold on, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna get my charger. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Okay, yes, got this. Hopefully my phone doesn't die. Okay. All right, King, is it a show? Um, I know, right? That's why I like analog horror so much. I don't know what analog horror means, but yeah, okay, what I was saying earlier was my best friend when I was in like middle school was really into horror, but we liked completely different types of horror because they liked the super bloody, super gory, super human centipede and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I like could not handle those. And I loved them and I loved being their friend, but going to their house for movie night was always so stressful. But then their dad would always like let us get whatever candy we wanted. And since I lived, sorry, <laughs> I'm like out of breath from going like next door, that's so silly. Um, but. Her dad would always let us eat like whatever junk food, stuff from the gas station we wanted. And I grew up like in a very like hippie, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free kind of household. So I wasn't used to like getting candy like that. And one time we got this thing of sour cherry blasters and I ate the entire thing and my like taste buds were burned off, like completely corroded for like a week and I just couldn't taste anything. It was the worst. It was like, you know, when you burn your tongue on something too hot, it was like that, but from, um, from acidic sugar terribleness. <laughs> when I was really young, I was such a girly girl and my mom was really strict about what I could wear my hair styles. Now I'm into alt style, no restrictions, just freedom. Just, yes, agreed, the Muffin Man. I feel, I saw this um, Tomboy post that was like, the uh, tomboy hating pink to non-binary loving pink pipeline, <laughs> or like whatever, and I was like, that is so funny because I relate so hard when I was a kid. I was like, no pink feminine frilly stuff for like a long time and now, I like love that stuff, but I also love like really dark, spooky, creepy alt stuff. So it's just like awesome to be able to love all these different parts of yourself and like not have to put restrictions on your aesthetics and stuff. Oh, goodbye, Daddy Himmel again. My family makes fun of me because I'm alt. All these bread, that is so sad. My family would also like, I think what they perceive as like lovingly tease me about my alternative aesthetics. But at the time it like hurt a lot. And like now I can like look back at it and be like, yeah, I did look a little bit silly or like, yeah, whatever. But it's never nice to make fun of anyone for how they look. So I'm really sorry that that happened. And even if they mean it in like a nice way, it's never nice to make so fun of someone for like them being alt. So I'm sorry you have to deal with that. That's not fair. Um, that actually happened to me a lot when I ate sour candy. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one with that experience. But I'm also sorry that you experienced that too, August, because it freaking sucks. Oh. Uh, Stay safe and happy, everyone. Yes, daddy mode. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's part of the reason I don't watch any new horror movies, if not with, like, a friend group who wanted to watch it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the last horror movie I watched. And I can't... I don't know, because a lot of the ones that I've watched recently, I'm like, I, w I don't know if that counts as horror. That would be more, like, 
psychological thriller or whatever, like the whole like, you know all those ones where they were like, the monster gets you if you make noise, like those? I, oh, I couldn't. Mm. Yes, I agreed 100% Gerhardt with that, that uh, many slasher movies has really effed up ethics. The other thing with that is the, I don't know why, because I watch a lot of like reality cooking TV shows on Netflix, so I was on the reality shows like tab to look at, um, whatchamacallit, if there were other reality cooking TV shows that I could go watch, because I love them. Um, and what I saw a lot of was like, these reality shows about people getting like arrested or like getting booked for stuff and it was all like arrested and like blah. and I was like what the like it that's like so messed up to have like entertainment of people like probably having the worst time of their lives probably like getting not like properly helped in any way by the justice system and just like be, like it, it was it I mm, dystopian straight up dystopian yeah bird box that sounds like what it was T thank you I literally read a ton of scary books as a kid. Creep over goosebumps from the Goon Lagoon. Now I literally fall asleep to horror movies. They calm me down so much. Muffin Man, that's so funny. My friend Megan's really similar to that. Um, I remember one of my favorite spooky authors as a kid that I could not get enough of was Anthony Horowitz. Cause I was really into like horror short stories and he had a little, it was called like Horowitz Horror. It had like a bloody hand print on the front and that will always be the most nostalgic book for me. Oh my God. Um, yeah, Nate Warner, I get watching older horror movies. It's a lot easier it's a lot of times because they're less, um, I don't know. Especially because sometimes when, nowadays with gore, you can get so realistic. And I feel like there's a lot of movies that are just trying to gross you out, like the human centipede kind of stuff. And it's like, what, why? <laughs> like, what is the purpose? I have to go for a bit. Okay, bye, Purple Funny Fox. It was nice to have you. That is absolutely horrible. Yeah, a lot of supposedly harmless entertainment seems to tell the story of the struggle of the status quo. Oh my god, Gerhardt, I like miss talking to you because you always hit the name on the head so hard. I feel you. Teal Tamuchi, my little brother, wanted to say goodnight to you. Good night, Teal Tamuchi, and good night to Teal Tamuchi's little brother. Or if you're staying, hello to you and good night to your little brother. That's so sweet. I was so tired last time I watched a horror movie that I fell asleep during the last conjuring. <laughs> At least it conjured me a good sleep. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I think that was one that I watched in theaters. And it scared me a lot. In fact, I think I was watching, okay. Yeah. I think I was watching that one in theaters alone. So I was supposed to meet up with someone and they never came. So I was like, whatever, I'll just go watch a movie alone. And I was just very scared the whole time. I did not have a nice time. Uh, I recently watched The Woman in the Window, a horror film on Netflix. I enjoyed it a lot. That sounds good. I wouldn't call it like a horror necessarily, but oh my God. And now I'm gonna forget what it's called. Oh, I hate Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass on Netflix was so good. I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, it was, yeah, like, a little bit of bloody and gory. Not too much of, like, not really any, a little bit of jump scary. Smidge. But for the most part, I really, really like that one. Um, a lot of modern home movies also rely on music to build the fear, which kind of just feels like cheating. <laughs> music hijacks your emotions. That's, I like that take. That's really funny. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Uh, the craziest thing is I can fall asleep to the scariest stuff, but I'll be sweating out of fear. I watch Get Out of <laughs> Get a Clue or Barbie Princess Charm School Mysteries freak me out. That's funny. Um, I always fall asleep. Okay, I used to listen to Sleep With Me, the podcast, but that, like sounds dirty, but it's a podcast called Sleep With Me, hosted by this guy named Scooter, um, and I love it. And I he just kind of rambles, and lots of times he'll repeat himself and kind of like mumble and like make kind of so it's like like you can kind of listen but not listen and it's like whatever so that was a sleep podcast I really loved but lately I've been listening to Get Sleepy and I love it so much there's this guy on it Thomas Jones with like a British voice Kid and I listen to him every night it's my favorite uh, I find Conjuring movies really boring it takes one to two hours to get to the good stuff that's funny uh, the first horror movie I watched was Carrie after I read the book but I love the 80s snow animation style and to me, Carrie will always be the best horror movie. Okay, I want to say Blobfish Human. I had such a traumatic time watching Carrie because of all the, um, all the, like, bullying and, like, period stuff and, like, the, I don't know. There's, like, that scene where she's crying in the bathroom and all the girls are, like, yelling at her about tampons and I was just, like, 12 years old and so uncomfortable with my body and, like, watching it and I was like, I'm gonna like fall through the floor right now I, I could not with that movie i feel like watching it as an adult 
I would definitely get a different reading of it, so I should definitely do that. Um, I, let's see. Uh, Evil Dead remake on Halloween. It was immensely gratuitous and honestly very poorly written. It just predicted the most egregious violence. I was never surprised. Yep. How long does sleep to ASMR is the best? Mm. I used to listen to ASMR quite a lot. Especially when I was um, in university and like, I don't want to be like feeling really lonely, but I would feel like pretty lonely. Um, and I would like put on the ASMR where people pretend to like be your friend or like be, you know, whatever. And it, it would be like hanging out with your friend, going on a picnic ASMR, or, like hanging out, like, <laughs> and it's like so funny. Um, but it's like so cute that people make that. Like, I love that. That's so sweet. Pe people are the best. Oh my gosh. Voltaire, Crystal Rose, yes, I love his music. Um, he was one of the things that like got me really into the goth scene because I was like a huge library person when I was growing up and I would just, when I first got into goth, I was like, well, I need to find a book about goth, obviously, at the library to like figure it out. And he had a book called Paint It Black, <clears throat> which was incredible and it's all about like goth DIYs and it really inspired me so much, so good. And then recently, probably like within the last year, I found out he has a YouTube channel and he does a bunch of freaking stuff on his YouTube channel and I just love it so much. Um, yeah, highly recommend Voltaire. Love it. Carrie is early Stephen King, right? Right? Is it? Maybe. I think that. He was a high school teacher when he wrote this. Was drawn from a place of, if not personal experience, with nervous reality. That's so sad. Because I remember when I was a kid, the bullying that happened was, like, not very intense. I think I just went to, like, a very sheltered -y school. Or, like, I couldn't tell when people were, like, teasing or making fun of me. Um, and also I just kept to myself a lot. But that's, like, intense that that would be people's actual things. I watched some one of the Jason films with some of my friends last summer and it was trash plot wise. It was just murder and naked girls. I could see that. Uh, same, I still watch those sometimes. Uh, oh, bye Teal Timochi and goodbye to Teal Timochi's sister and also their brother. Don't listen to his music but love his gothic homemaking series on here. Yes, Giselle. Oh my god. If you like, um, he's like a very, his lyrics are always very funny and clever and yeah, I love his sound. Um, it would be so cool to see him live because I know he does like concerts and stuff sometimes. But yeah, his homemaking series on here is amazing. I love it. There's this horror podcast that does ASMR eps and there's nothing to put relax. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Murder style ASMR. I got onto Voltaire with his gothic homemaking videos. He's so wholesome. Yes, I love him and his wife and just like his whole vibe. He's so sweet. I watched all of his videos a few months ago because of Jade the Libra. I love Jade the Libra. Jade the Libra, honestly. Jade the Libra and Raven Rye were two of the people that made me finally be like, yeah, I'm gonna do a YouTube channel, I'm gonna do it. Rosemary's Baby and Pet Summary at Terry are my top horror movies. I've watched Rosemary's Baby for the first time this year and I really enjoyed it. I can relate to keeping to oneself in a sheltered space. I was also quick spoken enough that I wasn't an easy mark so people left me alone. I remember Garrett. <laughs> I agree. That's a good thing to be. I'm having a very fun time listening to you while I looked at stuffed animals on Amazon. Oh my gosh, Carrie Hamlet. I love that. Um, one of the stuffed animals I got on Amazon is that little bat in the background. His name is Little Myotis, and I got him as a present for my boyfriend when we first started dating. And he has this heart sewn into his chest. And I opened his head and put a bunch of lavender inside. So he smells like lavender. And I love him. He's a little brown bat. And I got really into little brown bats because I did this school project on them one time. And I learned all about, like, the conservation efforts and stuff. And the fact that they get this really sad disease that, like, it's called white nose fungus. And it makes them, um, basically it makes them, like not be able to retain body heat so they like die when they're hibernating and it's like the saddest thing and I was just like crying like learning about it and they're just like the best little animals they're so cute they're so cute I really want a bat tattoo um but yeah his name is little myotis because um that's like the latin name for bats I think or for that OMG I want one yay bats yes I agree this bat I'm yelling so cute I agree that cat tapestry on the wall is amazing oh yes I love it I finally got around to decorating the craft room this is like, it looks like this. I love it. Sorry, I'm gonna wait till that's quiet. Um, oh, bye Guitar Geek, it was so nice to have you here. Um, but yeah, that's like a silk scarf kind of situation that I got at the thrift store and I'm obsessed with it. White nose syndrome interrupts into hibernation and causes them to freeze slash start to death. I know, it's the saddest crap in the world. Um, so yeah, 
there are like conservation efforts and like you can always build bat houses and do stuff like that but it's very sad because it's very infectious and just like the fact that yeah I can't talk about like animals dying out because it makes me too sad um now I have to read it <laughs> yes I'm getting a bat tattoo too yay Hallie the Hallie or Haley I'm hoping it's Hallie that's awesome it sucks that they get the white nose and it doesn't and it doesn't it suffocate them I don't think it suffocates them I think it like reduces their ability to hold on to body fat so it like depletes their system your hair looks so cool oh thank you Ross Carrie I went to a cave in my state one time and we got to go down in it but the most fun part was the little brown bat sleeping on the stairs <laughs> that's so sweet I love that <laughs> I got my friend an obsidian bat necklace for their Xmas present and I'm excited to give it to them oh my god the moist egg I hope your friend really likes it that sounds like a really good present I did do a project on it in college and almost cried during my presentation. Jessica Montoya, I also did a project on it in college and also cried, not during my presentation, but during the study of it. It was very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. Um, I did not get a very good grade in that class. I don't know why. When I was in high school, I like thought I was going to be a biologist. I thought I was like, oh, I love biology so much. Turns out I just liked my teacher and thought he was good at teaching. And when I got to university, I was like, oh no, I hate that. Like, I hate this subject. I am not good at this at all. Yeah. It's funny how that works. Um, yeah, that is what I was trying to say, but I can't explain it. <laughs> no worries. I get that. Go pollinators. Agreed, Hallie. Uh, the bat necklace sounds amazing. Rabbit, do you read a lot? And if so, what kind of books do you like to read the most? Okay, so I used to read a lot <laughs> before I went to university. Then I went to university and I had to read so much that I was like, I am not reading anymore. Um, but when I did read, and now I'm getting a little bit more into it, right now I'm reading The Last Act of the Circus Animals. It's kind of a political book. It's a little bit like Animal Farm, um, but it's basically about um, people in prison and it's like written from the perspective, like, it was written by prisoners and distributed as a zine and it was created, made into a book um, to be distributed, um, but they wrote themselves as like tigers breaking out and like taking over the animal tamers and stuff like that. So that's what I'm reading right now. It's very good. Um, and before, oh, Neil Gaiman's my favorite author. I love fantasy stuff like that. I don't read much sci-fi at all. People always ask me if I like sci-fi. I, mm, not really my thing. Um, I like kind of mystery stuff. I love Agatha Christie. Um, yeah, maybe one day I'll do a bookshelf tour. I think that would be fun because I finally got all my books back from my parents' house. Um, but yeah, haven't been reading a ton except for this message that I'm reading, or this one that I'm reading right now. Oh god, I hate biology. Biology is hard. Yes, I, I'm glad we all get it. I did get all my friends into bats. One got a seven-eyed bat tattoo on their elbow last month. That's so cute. I love that. Okay, I'm glad to hear that, Nate. Nate says the white nose syndrome is actually starting to be less common still in the early stages But scientists have found an immunity gene and it's becoming more dominant Hopefully we can have all the b little brown bats saved Hey, I have a bat tattoo on my shin and I want so many more bat things. Hi Ken. It's so good to have you here Hello, uh, that's so cool. I love that you have a bat tattoo on your shin. I am so excited I think oh god I can't decide if I want to get the bat tattoo first or if I want to get the rat tattoo first or if I want to get a portrait of tuna first Tuna, I don't know, even, it needs to be like a big beauty, oh, I don't know. I, I think the bat and rat will be on my shoulders though eventually. <clears throat> I thought I was going to be a physicist in high school because I was good at math and had no ability to separate liking being good at something from actually liking it. Gerhardt, I completely understand that. I remember thinking that I was really into math and it just turns out, I like things when I'm good at them, and as soon as I am not good at them, I really don't like them, which isn't one of my best traits. Not great. All kinds of science lessons are just the worst, especially chemistry. Agreed. I had to um, drop out of chemistry because I was so bad at it. I kept getting 60s, and it was, like, hurting me, <laughs> like, hurting my self-esteem so much that I just dropped out. Um, yes, Good Omens is so good. I love it. I also love, love, love all of Neil Gaiman's short stories, especially if you listen to Neil Gaiman's audiobooks, because he reads them himself, and they're so freaking good. Um, there's one short story that he has called The Truth is a Cave in the Black Mountains, and it's one of my freaking favorites. It's from his book Trigger Warning, and it's really, really good. Um, I've been reading books like Altimore's by C.S. Coastman. People in the Gothy Discord love Agatha Christie and I hear such good things about her writing. Hell yeah, Giselle. Oh my gosh. I um, I have, and then there were none, and the ABC Murders right now um, on my bookshelf off the top of my head, but there, she has a lot of good ones. 
I've always hated mushrooms. I was scared of them when I was younger. I can relate to that. Um, not with mushrooms, but I've been scared of worms since I can remember. And it's like, I hate that. I wish I wasn't. I love mystery, so I might check her out. Do it! Do it! So good. I answered both pronunciation, but it's the other way. Haley, okay, but you're good. My name is confusing. Don't! You're all good. Thank you for correcting me. I honestly really appreciate when people correct me, because then I actually know. Same, Sandman is one of my biggest influences in joining the alt scene. Oh my gosh, death with, yeah, dude, the makeup and the onk and the, oh, Sandman's so good. I love it. Um, like, Altamars, it's like a weird, cool sci-fi kind of thing. Cool. Yeah, right now my boyfriend's really into Dune. Um, he's been, like, listening to the audiobook and stuff. So, yeah, he's, like, really into the sci-fi thing. It's never been my cup of tea, really. Like, I really tried to get into Star Trek when I was a kid, but I just... I couldn't. <laughs> I tried, but I couldn't. Um, so yeah, I like fairy stuff, but like sci-fi stuff's not not as much for me. Yay about that gene for fats. That's also good to hear. I remember being a big issue for a while. Uh, math is hell for me. I'm sorry to hear that, Captain Kerosene. I relate sometimes. There were some things in math that I felt like I was so good at, and then there were some things that just literally I could not wrap my head around. Um, I have been into human anatomy, like anatomy of human heart brain and like bones. That's so cool, Ollie's bread. My brother's incredible at math and he's getting his PhD in pure math in Sydney right now and I'm just like, how? Yeah, I, one of the guys I know is like becoming a nurse right now and I'm like, how? What shows do I like? Okay, I just finished that chocolate show and I was obsessed with it. I also just rewatched the Great Canadian Baking Show because I love baking shows and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, but in general, I don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna make like a list of my favorite shows at one point, but for a while there I was just re-watching my Halloween classics because I was very um, upset that Halloween had ended. So I was just re-watching Beetlejuice and The Addams Family and all my Monster High movies like over and over and over. But like in general I watch really like, I watch like crappy like baking reality shows and like stuff like that. It's dumb. Um, if your boyfriend enjoys Dune, he will probably like Warhammer 40,000. Dude, when I was a kid, my brother was obsessed with Warhammer and that's why I have a bunch of like tiny chains. All these tiny chains I have are from when he was into Warhammer and he gave them all to me because he's like, Rabbit likes little things like this, so I'll give it to them. But yeah, the Luch yeah, my, my brother loved freaking Warhammer. I didn't get who you is. Your live was randomly recommended to me right now. Oh, thanks, Kitty Fanboy. Welcome. I'm happy you're here. Uh, what originally got me into alt style was Lolita. Never tried it, but now I'm very much arcade carpet. Vibe. Dude, yeah. Lolita fashion is so cool. I've, like, had uh, phases in my life, like, dipping in and out of it. Like, sometimes more sweet Lolita, sometimes more gothic Lolita. But I honestly just have so much, like, respect. And, like, it's so cool, people, that do that kind of style like every day especially with the amount of layers in coordinates with the petticoats and the bloomers and the oh my god I could never um but yeah Lolita is a beautiful style I love that um I have one of Agatha Christie's books and I've been putting off reading it for so long it's crime on the Nile IDK if that is how it's called in English I'm Greek sorry no no need to be sorry I think you're right and I hope you like it I don't like Star Wars fair Dune is amazing my dad grandpa and I all have so many old sci-fi books you would like Marion Zimmer Bradley she's a super cool lady and she was one of the first lady sci-fi writers I love that hey I finally watched the nightmare before Christmas the music is so good arson yes arson Danny Elfman one of my favorite freaking composers so good um his band Oingo Boingo also good Yas Beetlejuice and Adam's family, yes. It's 3.30 a.m. here, I have to sleep now. Yes, please do. Have a good morning, day, night, everyone. Yeah. Oh, Crystal Rose, um, yes, you can share a sad little story. I hope you're okay, though. Nate Warder, I'm working towards an engineering degree, and let me tell you, it made me realize while I'm great at math, I hate it so much. Engineering calculators are my safe heaven now. I can imagine. I will say, as someone in the tabletop scene, mm -hmm, there is absolutely no in-between with the Warhammer fans. Some are lovely, and a lot are absolutely horrible. Okay, well, Gerhard, I remember when I was a kid growing up, there was this Warhammer store in the mall that had this giant red, like, Warhammer guy, like, statue thing, and I felt so sad for him, because I was like, this poor, like, statue, like, is trapped in the, behind the glass, and I just, like, felt really guilty for him, so I would, like, go and, like, sit on his, like, giant metal statue foot and just, like, hang out there while my brother played Warhammer, <laughs> and it just feels, like, so stupid thinking back at, like, just strangers walking by the Warhammer store and like just seeing like a child like in the window like why did no one get me out of there that's so stupid I hate that 
Um, do you like decor key or visual key? Yes. I can't say I'm super familiar with decora, decora, decora key, uh, but visual key, I had such a big visual key phase in high school, especially like the hair and the makeup aesthetic goals. Lolita is so fascinating and beautiful. I love it. I agree, Ken. I've been watching a couple Lolita um, kind of adjacent um, YouTube channels recently, and it's been a lot of fun. I want to live at Spencer's. I feel you always, bread. Crystal Rose, I will listen. Yes, we will listen. I just hope you're okay. Has anyone seen Encanto? I haven't, but I've heard it's good. Are you posting this? Yes, I am. I have to go finish homework soon, and I want all the movie book TV recommendations. Aw, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this will be up. Um, I should make a video. I've been meaning, also, I really like podcasts, so I've been meaning to make, like, a video about all my favorite podcasts and stuff. Have you ever listened to Lemon Demon, the album Spirit Phone Cool? No. I'm sorry, I always hear about that band, and I've just never checked it out, but I will. Um, one day. It's 4.29 a.m. here, and I'm not tired because I feel safe being genderqueer and pansexual here, and I'm so stupid happy. Frog, I'm so happy to hear that. That's so, so sweet. Oh, I love your iron. Thank you, backup account. Uh, I adore Lulita Fashion so much, I wish I saw people in it more in person. I feel you. I remember one time when I was, like, very into Lulita Fashion, I tried to make my own, like, DIY dress, and it... I'm not gonna lie, it looked really bad, and like my headpiece also, it was, it was a really bad end result, and I like wore it out to the mall, and I got so many horrible, like weird looks and stuff that I was like, I'm never doing this again. Like dressing alternative and getting the weird looks is like such a mind F, because no matter how long you've been doing it, sometimes it still trips you up, and it's like, why does this matter? Um, I've been out as non-binary for many years now, my mom doesn't purposely misgender me, but she does all the time, she keeps forgetting, but for my friends who are, she is good with it. Crystal Rose, I am so sorry to hear that. It is really hard to have people in your family constantly misgender you. I wish I had advice for that, but I honestly don't because I sometimes deal with the same thing and I've just kind of come to be like whatever with it. Um, but it's like not fair and that's like not cool. Um, <laughs> that's so funny, Gerhardt. Anthropomorphizing objects is a very real thing for me. Yeah, especially because it's like a giant statue and he just looks so sad and giant. I would be like so sad thinking about it. I find my D&D groups among queer and literature circles. Nice. Oh, we don't talk about Bruno. I don't know what Bruno is. What is your favorite album from the Crook Shadows? Uh, oh my god, what is that one called? I, it's, <laughs> I don't know what albums are called, I just know what they look like. But it's the one that like looks like it's like black and brown collage. Um, if I find it on, um, whatchamacallit, the picture that I can tell you. The black and brown collage. What the fuck? T t yeah, telemetry of a fallen angel, that's the one, sorry. <laughs> I like, yeah, I'm bad at those ones. I feel bad for Crystal Rose. I feel bad for Crystal Rose too. Crystal Rose deserves um, parents that like don't misgender them and like friggin appreciate their... It's like so frustrating to have people that are close to you misgender you because you're like, I know you're not doing this on purpose, but like it genuinely is so frustrating. So I just hope that that can change for you. It's weird that your mom is like fine with it when she's around your friends. That's weird. Um. That's why I just remember because you mentioned Oingo Boingy has music has similar vibes. That's cool. Um, you don't have to come out to your fam if it's not safe. A hundred percent. You don't have to come out to anyone you don't want to. Honestly, like, yeah, hundred percent. I know, but I am the age that I can move out soon. That's good. Doing my research. Oh gosh, apparently Marion Zimmer Bradley wasn't a great person. Love that I look up a person I look up to and they turn out to be crap. That's always the saddest thing. It's so sad. I like, honestly, don't look at the history of artists and stuff that I listen to because I'm like I don't want to know I don't want to know like and that's probably not like not most responsible thing to do but I'm genuinely like I don't want to just be like sad because like oh you know who I love on YouTube you guys Savvy Writes Books um because I'm really into like anti-MLM not men loving men multi-level marketing anti-multi-level marketing I am more than fine with men loving men Sorry, I just want to clear that up. But I really like anti-MLM content in that way. Um, and they did a... They've been doing deep dives, which are like deep dives on guys named Dave. Um, and a lot of them are like kind of business guru scammers kinds. And Savvy did one on David Bowie. And it was so sad because David Bowie had like not a great history of like stuff with underage girls. And it was just like, not another one. Like, why is it every single cool 
person that you think is cool and then they always end up it's the worst i hate it um but yeah if anyone likes savvy writes books or if you haven't checked her out you should check her out she's the best uh, favorite ajj album the one with the heart with the dog i think it's called knife man let me double check knife man album yeah i got it right yeah the one with like the dog on it with the hand knife man <laughs> um <clears throat> doing my research uh, I'm not, I'm not out to anyone other than two queer friends because people around me make jokes of making fun of trans, non-binary, and queer people. Frog, I feel that. That freaking sucks. I remember one time I was at my place of work and there were people making fun, like, doing the attack helicopter joke about, like, people identifying as attack helicopters. And I was like, I'm non-binary and I'm right here. Like, y'all don't know, but, like, mm, it was so frustrating. So, like, I'm sorry that you can't come out to people. It's... It's really hard when you're not around supportive, safe people, so I hope you can find that space soon. Um, frog. My boyfriend misgenders me constantly. It really sucks, but we're working on it. Arson, that sucks. I hope that he, like, stops doing that. My boyfriend, um, because I came out as non-binary while I was dating my boyfriend, and he, like, a little bit struggled with it at the beginning, I think? But, like... He always made such an effort, and I, like, appreciate that about him so much, and, yeah, he's the best. Um, there's Punk Lolita. It's awesome and comparatively comfy to other subtitles in Lolita. Now that you mention that, Bethany Brody, um, I remember seeing, like, Lolita dresses, but with plaid and, like, band patches, and I was, like, like, it was so cool. Um, so, yeah, I agree with that. How do you feel about furries? Um, oh, the message went away. How do you feel about furries? I want to draw a rat or rabbit furry inspired by you. That's so sweet. I don't mind. Like, I feel like furries, people have, like, such negative opinions of them. And I'm like, they're literally just cool little dudes. Like, draw their little people, animal dudes. Like, it doesn't matter. It's so silly. Um, so I would love if you drew a furry of me. I'm, like, not particularly in the community, but I think furries are cool. Um, uh, people are trying to out me to my family. Ollie's bread. I am so sorry. What the F? Um, Glitchy Boy, I'm happy you're doing your makeup and feeling good. That's awesome. Wow, I'll look up later. That seems really cool. Yay! You know what's so funny? An eight-year-old was calling me by the correct pronouns and wasn't confused, but my parents can't. Oh! Jax, that is what I would call... What is it? The awfulsome? Yeah, okay, one of my favorite podcasts is called The Mental Illness Happy Hour with Paul Gilmartin, who feels like the best, like, podcast dad in the world, and he has this thing called awful Awfulsome Moments, where it's, like, things that are, in retrospect, like, pretty horrible, but also kind of funny and, like, you know, in a weird way. That, that is that. That is so sad, Jax. I'm sorry. Have you seen Danny Elfman's movie Forbidden Zone? I didn't get how to describe it, but it's so true to him. No, Nate Warner. I will have to check that out, because that sounds amazing. MLM being both of those acronym is legit so funny. I know, Jessica. I feel so bad when I, like, anti-MLM, and then people are like, you're homophobic, and it's like, not that MLM, Oh, Um, I hope you can feel safe soon, Ollie. Me too, Ollie. Crystal Rose, I know when I came out as bi, my mom always thought that I was just fantasizing being lesbian. I just remembered that my mom accepted me, and she became so supporting over time. I love that, Muffin Man. It can be so hard with parents. I remember one time a girl gave me flowers at school, and my mom picked me up to drive me home, and it was very awkward to be like, who are those flowers from? And it was like, Amanda, and I was like, oh. It was a whole thing, um, but now my mom, like, loves me, and, like, tries really hard with my pronouns, and I appreciate it. People's concepts of have an amount of inertia, so changing that is a matter of making them actively reconceptualize your existence and relation to them. Yes, Gerhardt, completely. It's so sweet how they reply to everyone. I mean, I'm trying, but it keeps, like, scrolling down, and then I can't see anything. The attack helicopter, yes, agreed, Kennedy. It's so boring and garbage. I'm not thinking it's just something that was me with crystal castles. Don't know what that is? Yes, those plaid dresses, yes. When I was a child, I didn't see transers discussed a lot in comparison to gayness. I naively assumed that was because everyone was clearly okay with trans people because why would anyone not be? Gerhard, I love that. that. That makes me so happy. I've heard people make the attack helicopter joke on my way back from home from school and I legit wanted to punch them. Thank you, we relate on that feeling. I'm happy that it's not just me. I've been out as bi for like six years now, and I'm known somewhere under the non-binary umbrella. Yeah, for like three, but haven't come out to my friends yet. He, she, they, gang for the win. The moist egg. I love people that use all pronouns. You guys are always the chillest. I am out as non-binary to all my friends, but not my family because they aren't really supportive of queer stuff. I get that. Like my mother doesn't even accept men having long hair and nails. 
Giselle, that is so stressed. <laughs> that is so frustrating and stressful for you. I'm so sorry, but I'm happy that your friends at least are supportive and you're out. Because children aren't born with hate. Yes, Captain Kerosene. My husband has to switch between misgendering me and correctly gendering me, depending on who we're with, since I'm only out to some people and I feel so bad for him. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. I remember getting, like, so worried when I was like, is Cage gonna use they, them pronouns, like, for me in front of his mom? And then he does, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's, it's so cool, I love it. Oh, oh gee, the boys group is my school kept on barking at me and my friend. It's so weird. That is really weird. I feel like some of the, like, some of the things, like, people bullied through, like, barking at people, it, or, like, when I was a kid, the way that I would get, like, bullied was people would, like, make fun of me, but I couldn't tell. Like, they'd be like, show us how you dance, and I would do it, and I didn't realize until later that they, that was, like, supposed to be making fun of me. But it's really weird when people, like, bark or, like, do stuff like that where you're like, what? I think this is weirder for you than it is for me. <laughs> He, they, it, gang. Yes, Ollie's bread, I love it. Any pronouns gang for the win? Yeah, I love this. Oh, Dania, thank you so much. Well, my dad is so transphobic that he told me that I will... <sighs> Glitchy boy, I'm sorry. You are a trans gay guy, and I'm sorry that your dad sucks. Honestly, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but, like, he sounds like he sucks. And you're completely valid, and I hope you find, like, a nice found family that isn't like that. One funny thing is I work at... <laughs> is, sorry, one thing, funny thing, I was at work and these three older women were completely ambiphobic, didn't understand at all, so I let them go on and on before finally saying I am and tried to educate them. Crystal Rose, props to you for doing that. The funniest thing was, you have a boyfriend, you have to be a girl. Lol, what? There are two genders, girl and boyfriend. Sorry, everyone. Um, they am gang, yes, Angel. I love, um, you know, pronoun users. Y'all are so cool. I, like, for a while... I mean, I still think I have it in my Tumblr bio that I'll use Faye Fair pronouns. Like, no one ever really does for me, which is fine. I don't really care. But Faye Fair pronouns, I'm super chill with. They, them, too. <clears throat> yes, Ollie's bread. Everyone, we are all valid. I love that. My mom almost made me uh, myself as trans, but I just pretended to be a... Yeah. You know, whatever you have to do for your safety, Captain Kerosene, I'm sorry that your mom did that. Sometimes parents can be, like, the most... Like, and it's... I assume it's because they're trying to protect you... But they're just really hurting you. What's the worst? Sometimes people will come up to me and ask a weird question, and then someone will tell me they were trying to bully me. They're just bad at bullying, I guess. Hated. Good. <laughs> Where did you get your septum done? Um, I don't know if it's a shop anymore, um, but it... Piercer Dan is the guy that did it. He's, like, this really cool guy with, like... <sighs> I'm sorry, I have a funny story to tell you guys really quick. So, my mom. I love her so much. But she's, like, a very hippy-dippy kind of like knitting and vegan and this kind of thing lady which is cool awesome fine but she loves me and supports me and my like weird gothiness and like was really trying to do that for me when I was younger so when I was 16 I was like I really really want to get my septum done and she was like okay like to show you that I support you I will take you to do it but like I will come with you because she was scared that I'd go to like some back alley place to get it for $20 or like whatever like I was like that's not even a thing mom like what are you talking about either way we went to the place together she, like, brought an ice pack for me because she thought that I would, like, need it for after the piercing. And she was all like, they're not going to numb you. And I was like, Mom, no. Like, no one numbs you for a piercing. And then the piercer guy, he had horn implants and stretched nostrils and, like, a split tongue and all this scarification on his nose and just, like, a really, really heavily modded thing. And my mom, like, bless her heart, she was... <laughs> I think she was gonna faint like right then and there because she'd never seen someone so like body modded and she's like okay like I guess you could like pierce my kid's nose now <laughs> and I like felt so bad for her um but she's so sweet and was like so sweet the whole ride home and stuff um but yeah I got it from this guy named Piercer Dan he was chill um yeah she yeah uh I think I'm somewhere in the gender fluid spectrum not sure yet that's fine but it's really funny how a boy in my class tried to insult me by not using she her pronouns but it actually makes me really happy haha huh? Okay, chaotic person, I have a very similar thing. When I was a kid, I had very short hair and I would get confused for a boy all the time. And I would like secretly feel really proud when it happened. And I remember one time I was at like some summer camp thing and they were like, okay, all the boys on that side and all the girls on that side. And I went to the girls side and there were people that were like, mm, why are you on this side? And I was like, uh, I'm a girl. But I was like secretly like so ecstatic that they like were confused about my gender. And that was like before I knew anything about like non-binary, trans, anything like this. And it, it's just like so funny how those things from like childhood or whatever can um, 
can come out. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny also when people like try to insult you but they can't. Um, I will not ever understand why so many people are against trans folks. You have to change one word. It's just easy to respect people. Nate Warner, I wish more people thought like you. And all the jokes used to bully people are never even funny, just rude. Thank you. Emo is used in, as an insult at my school. I get called emo and when I do, I calmly explain to them that I'm more of a punk and go on about being a punk until they walk away with an irritated look. I love that for you, frog. Uh, I use Fayfair pronouns for you in my head. If that counts, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Gare. I don't always end conversation mostly because I don't want to explain the philosophical and linguistic purpose of neo pronouns constantly. I get that. <laughs> I use all pronouns, but people usually only issue her, which gets kind of annoying. August, I hope people switch it up for you. What's your favorite food? Um, my favorite food, avocado rolls, avocado yam rolls with no mayonnaise. So good, dude. It's like sushi, avocado yam rolls. Yeah. I love them. Um, but I also really like almond vanilla cookies. I've been eating those like a monster. I make them into little moon shapes and oh my god, I love it. Um, yeah, my mom asked me if I was into girls and I said maybe. <laughs> Man, she's still confused. Oh, Jax. Would you recommend doing your own piercings? No, Captain Kerosene. I do not recommend anyone doing their own piercings. I know it's cheaper, but it's not a good idea. Just save up and get it professionally done because it is so much worse to get like that kind of infection and deal with yeah I don't recommend doing piercings yourself always trust a professional with piercings and tattoos I know a bunch of my friends have stick and pokes and stuff but I'm like do the professionals sorry your mom sounds so sweet she is Danya I love her Danya Danya I have to go to my parents barged in well bye stay safe I should be back at some point love you amazing people bye Ollie's bread a type of Greek junk food called pitogiro I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce that right, I'm guessing. Do you ever consider stretching your septum and ears? Oh, sorry for all the ears and questions. Don't worry, bats. Um, ears, no, because my boyfriend has stretched ears, and people that get stretched ears, I know this because I live with him and I love him, but he gets, like, people with stretched ears get, like, stinky ears, and I could not deal with that, because it's, like, the worst smell, in my opinion. Um, and I would not stretch my nose, because I had to take out my nose piercing, honestly, like, because I had a... I don't know if you can still see the scar, but I had a nose ring um, for a really long time. Um, but I had to take it out because it would get so uncomfortable with like the snot, I guess, in my nose. Like that sounds gross, but honestly, that's that's what it was, <laughs> probably. Like I would just get a stuffy nose, and it would be the worst. So I don't think I could um, stretch my septum because of that or any of that. I have to go to um, okay. Um, frog. Oh yeah, I went to a field trip with my school, and a teacher used he/him pronouns and just euphoria. I'm favorite to her, but she used one of the. Yeah. Dude, I feel you. I'm so sorry, OMG, that sucks so much. Wait, what happened with bats? Uh, I had to stop dressing goth recently because my parents decided to throw away all my stuff. I cannot wait to move out. I can't wait for you to move out either. That is literally so messed up. I I get those messages sometimes that are like, my parents threw out all my gothic or alt or whatever. And I'm like, how? Like, just because someone is your child does not mean you get to like, like, what is it about like, I don't know, parent, child, dynamics can be so messed up because like the, our society are like yeah yeah this is they have full authority do you make the avocado ram yam rolls i need a recipe um no i get them from like the sushi place but if you do make them it's um seaweed sticky rice um tempura yam and avocado so good um same for tattoos yes Bye, Muffin Man. Oh, Muffin Man's gone. Bye, Muffin Man. It was good to have you here. I just simply remember being upset when my voice first dropped since it made me less androgynous. It's dropped another six times since then. So I've embraced the sultriness of Basso for fun to them. Yes, Gerhard. I love your voice, honestly. Um, your videos are the only... Wait. Oh, no. It skips. I hate when it skips. I would recommend buying faking piercings. Yes! Fake piercings. 100%. Your videos are the ones who really inspired me to become out. I'm way more happy with myself now. Yay, glitchy boy. I love that. I love, um, yeah, that's so cool. Um, yes, I have two tattoos, Danya. Um, my boyfriend did both of them. Yeah, things are very uncomfortable at the moment. I hope things get better soon. I really hope they do too, Bats. That's really upsetting. Sure, cock, you have to pull through the parental pressure. That's a really good username. Exactly why I hide everything. Mm. Stretching cartilage is very difficult too. Painfully slow process. I just started stretching my ears. I love it so far. That's good to hear. I am just, uh, yeah, I would not be able to deal with the pain and the ear cheese, as I call it. My mom doesn't not like alt fashion, but she never, at least she never tossed my stuff out, which I'm so grateful for. I mean, 
I get saying like I'm so grateful for it, but that should be like a base level of like you wouldn't throw out anyone else's stuff. Why would it be okay to throw out your child stuff just because they're your child? Honestly, I don't understand neo pronouns, but I fully support them. Cartoon kerosene, I feel you there. When I first found out about he him lesbians, I like didn't get it, but I was like whatever. And then someone explained it to me, and I was like, oh yeah, I guess like pronouns don't equal like gender, and like oh yeah, I guess it does make sense that like, you know. It, it's a great thing to be like, I don't get it, but if they get it, that's fine by me. Like, yeah, you don't have to understand stuff to um, respect it. I'm gonna get a more androgynous haircut and it makes me very happy. Yay, zombie ghost, I'm excited for you. I love your hair color. Thanks, Danya. I have like a secret closet full of my all things my parents wouldn't like. <laughs> I feel you, <laughs> I feel you. I had like so much stuff that was like, there's nothing wrong with fishnet stockings. There's nothing wrong with like heavy chokers with like a metal ring on it or whatever. But I was so scared that like my parents would see it and think it was like very deviant or something. So I would like be very anxious to hide those things when I was a kid. And it's like so nice to not have to do that now. So I hope you get to like feel safe soon in your own space. But it freaking, I love that you have a closet full, a secret closet. Oh, oh, Shercock, I am sorry. That freaking sucks. Uh, as long as you support them, that's all that matters. Exactly! I love it. Secret old fashioned closet, yes. I did too, and then my parents found it and just threw my stuff out. Hundred dollar demonias are just gone. Bats. Bats, I would die. All that matters is that they're happy with themselves. Yes! What hair dye do you use? Um, normally I just use whatever I can find at the Shoppers Drug Mart. This time I used Punky Color. I think the color was Flamingo? Maybe? I don't know. Um, I don't think my parents completely get my style, but they support it. Yay! It makes me sad when people's parents don't support their style. Me too, Chaos Central. I remember it was really hard for me because um, when I started getting into alt fashion was also the same time I was getting into a lot of mental health issues that would have happened regardless of whether I was into the fashion or not, but my parents were very concerned that like, oh, our child is feeling depressed or feeling these ways because they're wearing dark eyeliner or because they're listening to this music, and it was not the case. In fact, that stuff like really helped me cope with those feelings. So it can be really, really hard because it's like, I get that your parent is just trying to protect you and they maybe grew up with like the satanic panic or like this idea that like all people who dress alternatively are, you know, bad, whatever that means. But um, it's really upsetting when people don't respect and support it, so, yeah, yeah. I hate sexualization of fishnets and toker. It just looks cool, bro. Agreed, bats. Uh, also, if you don't mind asking, is there a style called for the makeup you do? How can I find tutorials for it? This? Um, I have a makeup tutorial on my channel that's like my everyday punk makeup tutorial. Um, but I would recommend looking up either gothic makeup, e-girl makeup. I feel like a lot of people would consider this e-girl. I don't consider myself an e-girl because it's not like what I grew up with, but like e-girl might be what you're looking for. Um, or emo. Emo might also be what you're looking for. Um, I think those like emo, punk, goth makeup, those will get you kind of, or anime, anime makeup, that might also get you um, kind of what you're looking for. Uh, you should do it. Just cut all my hair off and it's so freezy free. Yes, Arsene, I love it. Um, I've seen a lot of people with profile feature like yours. What's with the eyes? What's with the eyes? Wait, like mine? Oh no, zombie ghost. Uh, I don't know what zombie ghost is thing is about. Alright, um, I just think as long as it doesn't offend anyone and it doesn't make someone feel comfortable. Yes, agreed frog. I'm very wary about dressing too out while I'm still living with my family just to avoid the headache of dad and grandmother's comments. Can't wait to move out and be the emo trash I am. Nate Warner, I agree with you. I remember like, cause Luckily, I don't live with like my very Catholic conservative um, grandparents, stuff like that. Not grandparents, but my gra one grandma is like very, very Christian, but she lives in Italy. Um, but I remember being very anxious about looking goth or whatever when I went to see her. And it's nice when you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. I don't get it when I hear so many alt LGBTQ talking about their abusive parents. Just like kids express themselves, slash be themselves, love you guys and support to all the peeps going through that stuff. Haley Walker completely second that it's really messed up that people's parents don't support them the way they should because like in my opinion you really shouldn't have kids unless you're gonna support them no matter what they do especially if that stuff isn't harmful like if your kid if they're like with me I was always like mom dad like I get good grades I don't go out I don't like party and stuff like that 
I just want to wear fishnets. Like, what is so wrong with that? But eventually my parents got it. But it can be hard. Um, Giselle agreed about the sexualization of goth and alt fashion. I'm very lucky because my dad used to dress very punk. He doesn't care anymore, but he still listens to music and stuff. My heart goes out to all of you whose parents don't. Yeah. I didn't have um, alternative, like, goth parents, but I did have very, like, hippy-dippy parents in that style. So I was very lucky that they were supportive in most... Like, I mean, at first my mom was like... I don't like this, like, it's all very dark and very, like, this and that, and she was, like, very scared for me because she was like, oh, like, this must be why you're dealing with mental health issues. But it's not, and, um, it sucks when parents don't get it. Yeah. Oh, 100% Gerhardt. Uh, oh, frog, I'm sorry your school is forcing your religious class down your throat. Um, so I dropped big boomer on the girls in song lyrics in the Bible they gave us. That's so funny. I went to Catholic high school, so I understand being in religion class. It's not fun. Um, my heart goes out to any of you who have to deal with that. Do you have any thrifting tips or something? Yes, acid bat, um, MF. I actually want to make a video on how, on like my tips for thrifting. For now, let me actually link an article in the chat that I really enjoyed. It's from Rookie Mag, which is, was like my Bible when I was growing up. Um, so you should see it there. Um, but it's a really good article all about like thrifting tips and stuff. Um, Rookie Mag, it was like my life when I was growing up. It's so good. My mom is buying goth. I'm very lucky to have a mom like that. Swag, that's so cute. I love that. Um, when sometimes I think about people that I talk to in this chat, like, becoming parents one day, and I'm like, oh my god, there's gonna be, like, pansexual, aromantic parents out there, and, like, cool goth, like, alternate, like, it's so cool to think about, like, us older, I love that. Um, oh, bye, moist egg, good to have you, I only ask because I have an eye phobia, and, oh, I see, I go to an online school because my parents are, yeah, I was in a religious class once and it was so boring, I mean, religion class was... I don't know, because when I was a kid, I was really, I thought, like, Christian mythology was super fascinating. Like, I had this book that had all these, like, saint, uh, or not a book, it was, like, from the library, but it was all about these different martyrs and saints and, like, all their really gruesome deaths, and I was like, this is so fascinating and crazy and weird. And I went to religion class, and I was like, this is a snooze. So, yeah, it can be, can be sometimes boring, sometimes not. Do you listen to a Slipknot and new Metal, or you're more of a mostly punk music person? Me? Myself? I love folk punk, so like my favorites are like Ramshackle Glory, AJJ, that kind of thing. I also love ska, like Streetlight Manifesto is one of my favorite bands. Um, also lately I've just been binging one of my friend's music. Um, their name is Indian Moon. I'll put it in the chat so you guys can look them up. Um, but they do amazing music and I just, um, I went to school with them for a little while in university and I just have been binging their music lately. I, I love it so much. I don't trust myself with having jewels. Captain Kerosene, I don't want kids either, at all. Zero desire for them. But when I see other, like, all, like, um, my boyfriend's sister is, like, goth, and she's a mom of two kids, and I love to see, like, goth moms. Like, that's so cool to me. That just reminded me, I went to thrifting on Wednesday with my very supportive sister and her friend, and I found a full-on vintage vampire shirt. That is so cool, Glitchy Boy. That's awesome. My friend has a witch mother and a witch older sister. She's so lucky. I'm so happy for her. I love that frog. Shercock, I actually drew a picture for God. And when my parents took it behind my back, I actually thought God was the one who took it. Oh, Shercock, that's so sad. You as someone who is attracted to goth and all people, I really don't get the mass sexualization of the style. It seems incredibly intrusive and objectifying. A hundred percent. Like, I've always thought about, um, should I do a leg warm thing or arm ones, please help? Izzy, I think leg warmer things are super great. I love seeing goth moms on Instagram, it's so cute. Agreed. <laughs> I, like, don't really care for, um, parent vlogs and, like, that kind of, like, in general, like, people sharing too much about their kids, like, really freaks me out, but when I think about, like, moms that are goth, I'm like, I love that, like, um, I'm in a lot of Halloween Facebook groups, and a lot of those people in those groups are, like, moms with, like, young kids and stuff like that, and it's so cute when they, like, are like, I decorated my daughter's nursery, and it's all, like, black with, like, Jack Skellington and, like, little, like, teddy bears with the eyes X'd out, and I'm like, goth mom, I'm obsessed. Uh, but I think having children under capitalism is a little wrong. Hot take, Captain Kerosene. I could see that. I'm Jewish, and when teachers taught me about it, it was so boring, but then I did some research on my own, and I found out there's a witchy practice in my religion, and I'm so happy. Yay, Jax! Yeah, I know, um, I know even, like, Catholic witches who, like, 
use the Mother Mary as their like goddess figure. So there's like tons of way to incorporate witchy practices and stuff in whatever religion you have. If you are religious, if you're not religious, you can also be like an atheistic witch. That's a thing. Super cool. I love that you found like Jewish witchy stuff that's like specific to you. I want to study other religions. I'm being taught Islam by my school right now, but I want to study other religions before I fully choose mine. That's awesome, Shercock. I think you should. I just wanted to share that in May, I'm going to Bikini Kill concert. It's going to be my first big non-local concert. I'm so excited. Zombie Ghost, that's so freaking cool. I'm, I thought like Bikini Kill was like La Tigre now or something. Um, but that's really neat. If you're, if that's a thing that's happening, that's amazing. One of my friends drew a dominatrix version of an old Greek politician in history class. Hello, Mario. She's a queen. Sounds like a queen frog. Hold up. If you don't mind sharing, what are your star signs? Ooh. <laughs> Mine? I'm an Aquarius in like five things. Um, like Aquarius, r general Aquarius rising, like all that stuff. Um, and I think like a Taurus moon and a Libra. So I don't know. I forget. Mostly Aquarius. Also, I say attracted and sense the need some clarification. I'm gray ace, but also hyper romantic, so it does mean something a bit different for me. Totally Gerhard. Sorry for all the typos. Don't be sorry, Shercock. Oh, also, for my birthday, my goth dad's redecorated my room for me. I was so happy. Alex, that is adorable. I love that. I have such a hard time figuring out my style because I think that I like everything on everyone else, but I never like it on myself. Lily Allison, I gotta say I'm feeling the same way. <laughs> Recently, I've been watching a lot of really... Um, a, a word that I found for it lately is maroot, which is like morbid and cute because when I was growing up it was very pastel goth or creepy cute, but it's um, now people seem to be calling it maroot. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of like very like vintage nightgowns with like very dark makeup and like buddy buds aesthetic essentially, which is this YouTube girl I was talking about earlier in the stream. And I'm like, I love it so much on them, but every time I do it on myself, I'm like, I hate this. And it like sucks when you can't get stuff to look right on you, but I think it's just about practice and like doing it often enough that it doesn't look so weird because sometimes it's just because you just first did it. Same with like trad goth makeup. I love trad goth makeup on everyone else, but every time I do it on myself, I'm like, I hate this. So it can be hard, but I always say just do it. It sometimes looks weird to you, but to everyone else it can look cool. So yeah. I love people sharing their um, OMG Bikini Kill Soap performance. That's what I was saying, Bats. I thought it was like La Tigre and stuff. Ah, I love people having pink hair too. And you're a Libra. My dad's a Libra. That's awesome. Didn't even mean to add the cat. I'm really cute. I'm a Libra son. Your video so helpful to me as a non-binary person. Yay, H. Marut. Why does that sound familiar? You'd be Aquarius heavy. Love that for you. Makes sense. Airy meets watery. Totally, Haley. But I'm in the closet and I want to tell people I'm a close too, but I'm nervous too because I don't really pass as a GF person. That's, as a gender fluid person, you don't pass. Gender fluid people don't look like anything. I constantly get told like, you're non-binary, but you're a girl. <laughs> no, I'm non-binary. Like non-binary doesn't look like anything. I get the um, anxiety there and I don't want to diminish that at all. But I would really, really highly recommend if there's people that are safe to, to you, that are close to you in your life, that you should share that with them. Because I also was so nervous that I'm like, oh, I'm not like gender fluid or like androgynous enough to be non-binary. But non-binary doesn't mean androgynous. It just means not in the binary. So if you're gender fluid, it's, it's fine. I think, um, yeah. Danya, you feel the same way? Oh, that's so sad. Um, yeah, because I don't think I pass as like a non-binary person. But I don't really care to, um, because I, I, I don't feel like one, so whatever. Um, but I understand that everyone is very different, and it's, like, so hard, because I can say that, and then one comment that'll be, like, she looks pretty, or whatever, and then it'll just, like, set me off and trigger me in the weirdest way, where I'm, like, why are that of all things? Silly. I look like me, and I am a girl, therefore I look like a girl. Exactly, Hayden! Same with me, I'm, like, I'm non-binary, therefore I look non-binary. Done. If other people can't see it, that's on them. <laughs> I'm gender too, too, and it has no look, so don't worry, no one can really pass, because you know there's no look. Hell yeah, Jax. They never fully broke up. Latigra is Kathleen Ben. She decided after seeing violence towards minorities that she was going to perform with Bikini Kill again. Okay, that's cool, because I remember Bikini Kill wasn't like... I remember they were trying to be really inclusive, like, in the early Riot Girl scene, but it was also, like, a very white, middle class middle class-ish space, I think. Um, so it's cool that she's back with La Tigre and maybe trying to like rewrite that a little bit or like try to change it. I love goth music as well. Um, all, all kinds of music, even the goth subculture. My step niece is goth. I love that, Joseph. Um, gender fluidity is also by definition non-constant. The very fluidity, which is integral to it, strains against the need for consistent passing standard. Gerhardt, always dropping the most smartest ways to put things. Oh my god. 
<laughs> As I say, the most smartest. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathleen's newest project is the Julie Ruin. That's the one. Thank you. I feel so weird about my gender because some days I feel like I have it figured out until I don't. And at this point, I just want to understand myself. Carrie, I get it. I've given up trying to understand it or define it at this point. And I just kind of do what I like. And it makes me so much happier. Like, yeah, I remember when I was trying to be a girl and I would constantly feel like, well, I'm not feminine enough. I'm like too hairy. I'm too this, I'm too that. My whatever, I'm not like cute or like doing things in the right way. And then when I finally let go of like needing to live up to this girl standard and just being like, I'm just not binary and I'm just gonna do what I wanna do, my life improved so much. So like, yeah, holding yourself to these weird standards of like what it means to be a girl, a man, non-binary, whatever, it just hurts us in our community. And it's just so much more liberating to let yourself be yourself. Uh, sometimes I really don't like being gender fluid because people tell me just choose a gender and it's really fucking annoying. Yeah. I get that. People are annoying about that. Oh, good night, Angel. Um, thank you for dropping in. It was very nice to have you. Um, what is Cloudy talking about? I'm an AFAB non-binary person. I struggle with wearing skirts, dresses, bralettes, and my face styles like Sweet Lily and Princess. Any advice? I love mixing up with grun grunge vibes. H. Um, that, um, let me think. Um, so you don't want to wear dresses, skirts, and bralettes. Okay. I would try bloomers would be like one thing that i would recommend first off um generally um like if you do the lacy kind of thing but you put it on leather you put it um with like denim jackets you put it with lots of spikes that kind of thing i would highly recommend um in general like very dark makeup but with like frilly jackets and stuff like that i think like when you do the makeup dark but the clothes light that can be really fun or the opposite um but yeah Oh, good night, Alex. Thanks for dropping in. I'll tell you some, I'm not sure as well. Okay, what is Cloudy talking about? Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm like trying to scroll up. I got carried away. My boyfriend told me he's in a polyamorous relationship with someone else at the same time as me, and I don't know what to think. Okay, um, yeah, your boyfriend should have definitely communicated that before doing so. Um, there's a really good book called The Ethical Slut, um, and it's about kind of open relationships, polyamory, that kind of thing. I highly recommend that because, um, yeah, you can't just tell your partner, hey, we're polyamorous and I have another girlfriend. Like, that's not how that works. And that, like, gives polyamorous people a really bad name. This stream has been so fun. I would love to see your stream again. No pressure and it brings you anxiety. No, it's not bringing me anxiety at all. I'm actually, like, really enjoying this and I would like to pop in soon again. Um... <laughs> love it, gear. Um, glitchy boy. Any recommendations for patches? I'm making my first pair of patch pants and don't know what to put on them. I already have pride flag, anti-88 and pentacle, a mushroom, and BLM. Any ideas? Love that, glitchy boy. Um, I personally love to do, like, really simple things like hearts and cat faces and tombstones. Um, you can do your favorite bands. If you look up your favorite bands' logos and they have, like, an easy logo, you can try to replicate that. I think it would be cool. Um, one of my favorite patches that I made that was inspired off someone that I saw online, it just says punks respect pronouns and I put a bunch of little stars on it. I love that one. Um, you can make a pronoun patch, like just with your pronouns on it. I think that's a good thing on your pants. Um, yeah, there are lots of ideas. Kathleen has definitely improved and tried to be more inclusive, which makes me very happy. You can tell she definitely educated herself and learned about issues that involve non-white people. Agreed, zombie ghost. Agreed. I remember when I watched the punk singer when I was younger and she was like, my hardcore idol and then when I was in university I was trying to do a project about her and then reading more critical stuff about her and being like ooh, not the most inclusive queen that I thought and I'm really happy to hear that she's trying to improve and learn more because we all gotta learn don't be sorry zombie ghost I love to hear that yay cloudy dreams I'm happy that you'll talk to him soon because um sounds like uh, he's not really respecting boundaries People get confused because I dress up like a boy, but they don't know I'm a trans guy, and it makes me so happy when they say I look like a boy, lol. Yeah, I feel you, Ross. Yeah, sadly, my mother is homophobic. The way I found about makes me really sad, too. I mean, it just hurts her. Yeah, sure, cock. I'm sorry. That sucks. That's, like, literally no fun. Um, hi, again. I worded my message wrong. I like- Oh, you like wearing skirts and dresses, but I get social dysphoria wearing them out of my room. I love them so much, and I love grunts and stuff. I can understand, well, no, I can't understand because dysphoria is not something that I very much experience as, as other people have described it. Like I experience euphoria, gender euphoria, but I don't think I've experienced gender dysphoria. I would recommend um, when that's the case, like when you're feeling very anxious about the clothes you're wearing out, 
bring a big cover up later layer so when you do get anxious you can cover it all up um like if you wear a vintage nightgown i think that that's like such a cool um lolita look um but then you have like a big jacket so if you get stressed out you can just be like f it i'm putting my trench coat over top perfect um that can be like my biggest suggestion um but in general like wearing things a little bit out like just to go to the grocery store just to go to the park like wearing your really cute outfit and then come back inside that can help build your kind of tolerance for like the weird looks and people being weird about you wearing fun clothes and like stuff like that so i recommend like kind of start doing it in small doses if possible because it's really i think sometimes a matter of like practice and habit um, and also bring like a big cover-up layer so you can cover up if you need to but yeah I love muffin yay my favorite patch I have is the mothman I put on the back of my jacket Nate Warner that sounds so cool it's led to a running joke in my friend group to point at every mothman thing they see to me that's so cute polyamorous is a thousand percent about communication there can't be don't ask don't tell exactly a monogamous partner is okay with it but you do not just beat it up I'm in a you're the first person who has called me my chosen name out loud. Thank you so- Aw, oh, Ross. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. That's so sweet. Um, I love your style and clothing. Oh, Cloudy. Thank you so much. Mothman is really cool. Also, you're- <laughs> Yes, Mr. Polite Turtle. That is a very good username. I get so shy to wear what I want to wear in public. I started being more adventurous with my clothes, but I still get so shy wearing my goth makeup out of the house. Oh my god, Casey. <laughs> I relate to that so hard. My majority of my 13-year-old evenings was spent, like, putting on really bad, really messy, like, eyeliner with, like, giant swirls and, like, going in the bathroom and taking selfies. So I have really embarrassing pictures of me, like, being, like, the very edgy at 13 with, like, really bad makeup. So I get it. It can be, um, really stressful, especially when you're, like, starting, um, with something to, like, get the courage to wear it out and stuff. But... Everyone is so worried about their own stuff that even if they do look at you weird, like, they're gonna forget about it. Like, do you remember anyone's outfit that you saw today or yesterday or last week? Like, unless they were wearing something really cool that you're like, whoa, that was so amazing. You generally don't remember it. And even if you do, like, what, what are you gonna do? Like, it doesn't, you know? So I find it really helpful to just kind of think in those terms of like, well, I wouldn't care if I saw someone wearing this. So if someone cares about me wearing it, then that's stupid and that's on them. <laughs> like, eh. Um, I'm so happy, Izzy. That's awesome about your leg warmers. Also, can anyone call me Emma here? Yay! Um, sorry I called you by the screen name before. Um, but yes, Emma. Love to hear that. Um, I relate. I felt so shy wearing goth makeup when I first started. Yeah, when I was first in, like, wearing it to school, I was also scared that people would be like, well, Rabbit was, like, not wearing this, like, before, and now they're very goth, and, like, that's weird. Um, but people people just do, do things in their own life and if they ever are like oh you're dressing dark now you can just be like yeah and that's that <laughs> like it's it's fine um your name is actually carson i'm gonna change it to my chosen name because i feel so yay i love that um i definitely need to make more patches your battle jacket would really inspire me yay Haley! i need to go rewatch it yay and yes thank you for inspiring creativity and safeness that's so sweet same thing it made me really comfortable y'all are so sweet Ugh, oh, i went there for the first time like two months ago you would be terrified to steal my eyeliner. <laughs> I love, like, messy eyeliner. It's my favorite. Um, there is a Mothman Museum. I need to go. Um, no, no, my scream name is okay, too. Oh, okay, Captain Kirk. Right, okay, Emma. Sounds good. <laughs> um, I look like a panda. I didn't wash it off. Oh, my gosh. Um, my mascara, if I don't use, like, a oil-based makeup remover, it's raccoon for days when I wash it off. My chosen name is Jin. I love that name. Jin, that is so cool. Um, when I was, I know JK Rowling sucks, but when I was younger, I loved Ginny from Harry Potter so much. Ginny and Luna Lovegood were my two first like fictional girl crushes, I feel like. Do you have any tips on eyeliner? Do I have tips on eyeliner? Um, yeah. Um, use those like felt tip liners. Those are really helpful. Do your eyeliner, like draw a dot and then connect it. Um, and you don't have to do it all the way in. Like, with my eyes, if I, like, did my eyeliner all the way in, it would, like, make my eyes look really small. So you can do, like, half eyeliner. Also, if your arms shake, put your um, elbow on the desk while you're drawing it, and that helps steady it. I love Luna. Yeah, Luna Lovegood was good. Honestly, being confident and 100%. Start with small wings when you work your way up to bigger wings and more intricate looks. Also, better activated liner is so much easier to use than liquid. Hmm. I... 
yeah, I find liquid liners not great, but felt tip liner that's like pretty much like a Sharpie, that stuff's the best. <laughs> I have a pin from the Mothman Museum that's a Vote Mothman as president pin. Dude, Cronine, I feel you. We sell this patch or this pin at my work that says my cat for president um, and has like a silhouette of a cat and I want to get it. We don't have presidents in um, where I live in Canada. We have prime ministers, so it really should say my cat for prime minister, but whatever. Um, oh, Shercock, so sweet. Oh my god, okay, everyone's so, so sweet. <clears throat> However, I did tell my boyfriend that we could eat dinner tonight at some point. Um, and I'm getting kind of hungry, so I might pop out soon. What do you think about the band Kiss? I love their makeup, but I've never really listened to much of their music too much. Being called by my chosen name made me feel really happy. Thank you so much. I know this might be weird. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Never apologize for cheesiness. I love um, cheesiness. Also, Luna Lovegood was the first fictional character I related to. Seeing a charismatic yet radically neurodivergent, academically inclined character was quite impactful. Gerhardt, I agree 100%. I was really, really into Luna Lovegood. Um, you know how in the book she had her magazine, The Quibbler or whatever? There was a website that you could print out like your own The Quibblers. So I printed out a bunch of them and I made myself like a necklace out of bottle caps that were like Jones bottle cap necklaces so I could be like Luna Lovegood and <laughs> it's just oh yeah I loved her so much. It sucks that yeah Tuna for Prime Minister 100% Raven song but it sucks that JK Rowling turned out to be so crap because Luna Lovegood was a great character and she didn't deserve that. Oh my god Rio's World that's so exciting I honestly kind of wanted to do half black half pink but mm. both the light shot and the video is helping me way more than any makeup tutorial I've watched. Ooh. I wore my patch pants to cream for our school play and the costume director was like, whoa, that's quite an outfit. And she was really nice to me. I was worried she would disapprove, but she was so cool. I love when that happens when you think someone is going to be like weird about something, but they're not. That's the best. Can you turn, pr try to pronounce my name, please? I feel like you're going to sound so cute. It's Iram? I'm going to try Iram or Iram. Oh God, <laughs> when I said Iram, I, oh, I hate it. <laughs> I just ordered dinner from Virginia because I'm super sick today. Nice, Ken. I love it. Hi, Liquid Ink. Oh my god. One of my people that I recognize from Tumblr. My people. <laughs> One of my mutuals from Tumblr. Hi, Liquid Ink. Um, I looked up baby names for my first name choice, which was Ada, but I think Emma is Ada or Ada. Either way, beautiful. But I think Emma is better because there's so much more meaning behind it. Yes, Emma, honestly, I gotta tell you, I've had a crush on pretty much every girl named Emma I've ever known. There was... Oh my god, I was about to say their last names. That would have been so bad. There was Emma, who I worked with at my very first job. She was so cool, and she was like a scene girl. I think scene is so cool. Then there was Emma, who I went to Catholic school with. She was, um, whatchamacallit, like really hippie fairy. Kind of, like, she always looked like a fairy. She was so cool. Um, but yeah, I feel like every time I've met an Emma, I'm just like, <laughs> like, it's such a weird thing. Um, hey, please help. I always choose outfits I love for special days, but on actual day, I never actually use the outfit because I get nervous wearing them and I end up wearing something else. Kim, oh my god, story of my life. Kim, that and also wearing the special outfit and then going outside and immediately regretting it. It's so hard to do that. I think, um taking pictures in the outfit so you can reassure yourself that you look cool remembering that no one cares and also just like telling yourself like this is a piece of clothing and it is meant to be worn and it is doing no one any good sitting in this closet so i will do it a favor and i will wear it today i know that sounds stupid but like just knowing that you haven't worn it and it needs to be worn can be really helping <laughs> heck yeah uh Seeing people are so cool. I miss that. Uh, how did you choose your cat's names? We did not choose either of their names, Danya. Um, Tuna, we got from the cafe I work at, and that's where she's from, and her name was Tuna when she was there, because, okay, this is actually so cute. So, the place I work, and a, at a lot of animal rescues, um, they don't name cats or dogs or whatever um, the same name ever, because it would get messed up in the system. So they named them in batches, either like the litter batch or the batch they got rescued in. So Tuna was from the fish batch, where like all of them had fish names. So there was like Goldfish and Guppy and uh, Mahi Mahi and like all these other fish ones. And Tuna was Tuna still. And then Lemon, um, Lemon is actually Cage's, like she was Cage's girlfriend's cat when they were together. Um, and then Cage and the girlfriend broke up, but Cage was more attached to Lemon than she was, so she came with him throughout her life. And now um, I got Tuna from where I worked, and yeah, it's the best. My cat is Nate Night Parks. He's a light orange tabby. That sounds so cute. 
Um, I chose the name Jim from a few characters and from the alcoholic beverages. I also just think it sounds like really nice and classy. Yes, Jin. Um, I love juniper berries and I think that that's what Jin is made of. Um, but juniper berries was always one of my favorite things to harvest when I was a kid. Uh, heck yeah, Gerhard. That's a really good... I like y'all's shoelaces. Thanks, we stole them from the president, Jin. Um, <laughs> sure, Craig, he's black and white. I love, um, tuxy cats. I took an old hoodie and added chains and safety pins, and right before I left the house, I covered it with a normal hoodie and it took off the second I got home. I've done that, Alyssa Grant. It's okay. Sometimes those days will happen, and you just gotta try again. It happens. Don't be too hard on yourself. Your cat's names are Opal and Tofu? I love that. My friend has one cat named um, Mochi and another cat named Galileo. And I think those are so damn cute. And then my, my old neighbor had Clancy and Pita, but like Pita like Pita bread. I died. Oh, I was thinking I really liked to school and got loads of compliments and from my teachers as well. And it made me feel I love that cloudy dreams. That's awesome. Want to hear something funny? My dad was trashing my mom's music because she listens to basic music and his Spotify is Jack Stobber and other music. I agree with him. Oh, uh, whatever. Basic music is fine. Fun music is fine. I'm gonna head off. Bye, Mr. Polite Turtle. I'm so happy that people are nice. Remy and Spud are amazing names, Liquid Ink. Oh, Chew Toy. I had a fish named Sushi growing up. I feel the same way with the kind of dark humor names. One of my cat's name is Arwen after the Lord of the Rings character. I want to make a patch so bad, but I hate pants. You don't have to put a patch on pants. You can make a patch for your jacket or your cardigan or your t-shirt. Uh, oh, no, you said you want to make patch pants so bad, but I hate pants. Yeah, okay, can't help you there. Maybe make a patch skirt? Um... I love that Marbo 867. I'm gonna read that out. If I'm nervous to wear a crazy outfit, I just imagine my 10 year old self. And if me at 10 would think it was a cool outfit, I wear it. That is perfect. That is so perfect. When I told people my name, I joked it was like the movie with the birds. <laughs> I used to have a kid named S Siko or Sai. No. Kiko? Siko. He was a blue Russian. He was so. Blue Russians are so cute. My friend's cat name is Little Poopy. That sounds like something my boyfriend would name our cats. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> oh, as in basic music, it's instrumental. <laughs> okay, patch skirt or dress. Yes, patch skirt. Yes, I have a patch skirt. I love my patch skirt. Oh, yes. Oh, Ken, your puppy sounds so cute. Yes, I call, I was about to say I call Luna. I call Tuna Luna. I also call her Loon and Looney Tunes. And yeah. Oh. I literally have two sweaters I actually wear because everything else makes me feel so dysphoric. Any advice? Fruit Loop, um, try to get more sweaters in the same style that also don't make you feel f so dysphoric or try to figure out what it is about the shape or the cut or the style of them and try to replicate that in like t-shirts and other kind of clothes that you can find. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with wearing a sweater or a hoodie every day. I can be kind of like, if you don't want to be wearing a sweater and hoodie every day, try to find clothes in the fitted way that would make you feel your most euphoric. Um, but like, if you want to and it like doesn't bother you, I think it's cool to wear um, sweaters every day. Okay, I feel like a lot of people are kind of heading out now too, which is cool because I'm also needing dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys, but I love talking with y'all so much. Um, I'm actually gonna pop out for now um, and go eat dinner with my baby and maybe watch some new Netflix shows. But I really appreciated chatting with you all and I hope you all have a really lovely night. And um, yeah, I hope I can stream again soon. I really enjoyed this. I wanna figure out next time how to do this with my camera. So I'll try to get it figured out for y'all. But thank you so much for um, tuning in. I'll keep this up so um, y'all can watch it on the replay. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a lovely night. Um, goodbye and yeah, goodbye and farewell. <laughs> Love ya, bye.